other tight end is in there. Here's a toss to Sims, and he gets the first down. And more as he comes out to the 25. You said he's going to play 60 minutes today. He might. He's going to wear a couple of pairs of shoes out, too, if they get in the ball as much as they start out in this game, too, Jack. Eckern and Rod Perry were the tacklers, but not until the play came out to the Detroit 25 and the first first down of the afternoon. The Lions are partly in the baseball infield portion of this stadium. Talking to Monty Clark yesterday, he was very concerned about the fact they only rushed for 67 yards last week. I'm sure they're going to try to do more of it this week. Bussy is the up back. And it's Sims again, and no game. He was tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Carl Eckern, the tackle. The reason the Lions are doing this is that the Rams were terrible, I mean just terrible, against the run last year. They were 13 specifically against the run last year, and of course it's easy to understand. They have such an outstanding secondary, it's easy to understand why they run. Gracie Porter, number 89, the wide receiver, has come in with a play from the sideline. They alternate their wide receivers. Leonard Thompson goes out, and it's second and ten. We're just underway here. Ray Malavese, the head coach of the Rams. He's looking for his first win. And here's the first pass by Hipple. To the right sideline, wide open. Wide open. Down inside the 30-yard line goes Sims to the 22. Slim, Sims slid around somebody on the corner. A 52-yard gain, and it was up to Nolan Cromwell to come over and make the hit. That was a play-action pass, a play-action pass, faking to the fullback, Dexter Bussey, and throwing to Billy Sims. He's wide open, and it looks like Youngblood had coverage on the play. That's Jim Youngblood. He just ran right by him. Yes, at number 53, and that's the matchup you like, a linebacker trying to cover a halfback like Sims. They got what they wanted, and a big play of 52 yards for the Detroit Lions. And a first down. Quite a touch Hipple put on that ball. He laid it up there. You know, the nice thing about the throw, he threw it up there high enough so Sims could run underneath it. The other way, had he thrown it on a rope, he might have missed it. Horace King watches as Bussy carries the ball for two yards. King checked in as Sims gets a little breather, and Carl Eckern with another tackle. And up front, Mike Fanning was there. I called him Jim Fanning last week, thinking of the baseball man. It is second down, second down and eight. Herb Batera on the sideline, we see him sig signaling the signals into the defensive unit of the Los Angeles Rams, and he does a great, great job for the Rams. Now, Bussy is now in his 10th year in the pros. Here's a pass play by Hipple, and he can move. He doesn't mind running. End zone, it's open. Incomplete. He overthrew it. He had a man down there as he tried to get it out to Bussy, who had shaken loose in the end zone. The Ram coverage wasn't good at all. Oh, he was really open in the end zone, but by the time Hipple was flushed out of the pocket and got set to throw the ball, it was tough to get the ball to him on target, but he was all alone in the end zone like he ran right out of the bleachers. Pat Thomas was closest to it. It is third down and eight. Lions looking for their second win of the year after beating the Bears 17 to 10. We'll have lots of uh, football scores, including finals for you as we get settled in here. The tight end, David Hill, is on the right side. Three wide receivers for Detroit. And Hipple on third down and eight. Runs out of the pocket. A flag goes down. The ball comes loose. Detroit picked it up. It's going to be a big loss. It probably was holding. And then the big loss back to the 31-yard line. Mike Fanning ripped the ball away from him. Anytime you see a flag in that area, in all probability, it's going to be a holding penalty against the Detroit Lions, but let's wait and see what the official calls it. Now the Rams have a choice to make. Take the holding penalty or take the play back at the 31, a minus 16 yards on that play, on the sack and the fumble. 70 offense, holding, penalty refused. Keith Dorney was holding, the penalty refused, and... Uh, it is fourth down, and if the Lions want to try a field goal, it'll be a very long one, but they're going to punt with John James, who wore the Atlanta uniform for a long time. We ought to, a long time. We ought to explain the Lions' kicking situation. Two new ones. Yes, and I think that John James is an excellent kicker. He'll try to kick the ball out of bounds in this situation. He's a very accurate kicker, and on place kicks, Bob Thomas, who used to kick for the Chicago Bears, occupies that position on their roster as a place kicker. The Rams use their regular safeties. They, they do not have their kick return men in there. 
Johnny Johnson is deepest aiming for the sideline. James gets it out of bounds with a pretty good kick. Let's see where they mark it at the seven yard line. Out of bounds at the Los Angeles seven yard line. So the Rams withstood that long pass play and they get the ball for the first time but they're way back at their seven. Just try to get the crowd rolling and there is a lot of blue and gold being worn here. Burt Jones is the quarterback. Wendell Tyler, Mike Gooman in the backfield with him. Willie Miller and Preston Denard are the wide receivers. And Mike Barber, the tight end, with Panky Hill, Smith, Heron, Slater. And motion is shown by Denard. And here's a give to Wendell Tyler. He comes to the 10. He's out to the 12. He got five. Hank Stram, I was uh, shocked as we watched White and Cobb, two Detroit linebackers, make the tackle. I was shocked at the, uh, well, we'll talk about this in a moment. Let's check the line defense for you. Purifoy, William Gay, Doug English, and Al Baker, who's starting today, are up front. Gary Cobb. Kemp Van Tetty and Stan White are the linebackers. Wayne Smith, James Hunter, Ray Oldham, and Alvin Hall. Denard caught only one pass last week. That's very unusual for him, but uh, they featured they featured running throwing throw their running back a lot last week. Here's Barry Redden, the rookie, running with the ball, and he only got back to the line of scrimmage. That's all. It'll be third and five. You know, one thing the Lions do a lot of, they do a lot of... Uh, adjusting defensively with the linemen, and so it means that the uh, Los Angeles Rams will have to spend some time changing the play at the line of scrimmage or either that or guessing before they call the play with the anticipation of getting the right defense for the right play. You mean they guess a lot in this game? <laughs> Usually those are some of the best plays. Third down and five from the 12-yard line of the Rams. Tyler is in there with Barry Redden, the rookie out of Richmond. Uh-oh, somebody did something. That'll cause somebody five. Meanwhile, the play continues, and Jones wisely hits the deck because the official didn't toot the whistle. Let's see who did what. If it's against the Lions, it probably would be enough for a first down. Let's watch. Here he goes back into the pocket, but the ends came up the field way, way too soon. Penalty against the Lions on the play. Looks like English was the one. I think so. Too much English on the ball. <laughs> too much spin. Number 78. And it is a first down as it comes out to the 17. So the penalty takes the Lions away from the shadow of their goal line. John Hadle, the former great quarterback of the San Diego Chargers and also the Rams and also Green Bay is calling the plays from the sidelines. And I mentioned last week he loved in this situation as a quarterback to throw deep. Wonder if he will do that maybe in this series. He has the man to do it in Burt Jones. Jones last week 17 out of 31 he was intercepted twice and those are his career or 1981 figures motion by Barber the tight end the fake draw the pass play on the move and it is caught and the play goes out of bounds to the rookie Barry Redden he lost his footing but he got about nine yards on the play they're staying uh, with the youngster the Gooman has started last week but it's reddened today it's a play action pass the mesh between a fullback and a quarterback was good Burt Jones rolls to the outside hits the number one draft choice Barry Redden in the flat and they pick up a nice gain on the play it is nine yards you know they like him and you know he can catch the ball or he wouldn't be in there Billy Waddy is to the right and Hill is the wide receiver to the left with Barber on the left side here comes Hill in motion and a toss to Redden trying to get the yard. He does, slanting across the 30. He's out to the 33. English got off the ball in good shape. He just did not have enough speed to catch him from behind. And not many linemen can do that with a fast back like Barry Redden, number 30, who jumped to the outside and made the necessary yardage for the first down. The Rams offense last year, 24. Look what they did against the... Against the uh, or with the passing department. No wonder they wanted a new quarterback. And they had a lot of injuries last year, in all fairness to the Rams. They had a lot of injuries with their offensive line. And Pat Hayden was hurt, and that made a big difference, too. From the seven-yard line, they're out to the 33. Jones out in the flat again. Why not? They made it work once, and they made it work again. And Alvin Hall bumped the, the receiver. Drew Hill out of bounds. Bert, good good Bert, yards. Yeah, Burt Jones is a very patient quarterback. He's going to take what they give him, and right now they're giving him the flat, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's traveling slowly, 
he's satisfied to take the bus rather than try to take the jet. And uh, all he's interested in really is making first downs. Willie Miller is the wide receiver now to the left side. Outside of him is Preston Denard. Second down and three. Wendell Tyler gets the first down. He is out near the 43-44 yard line. That's going to be another first down on the carry by Tyler Fantetti, the tackler. This is a pretty good drive. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, the other thing, the Rams are doing a good job of hitting the soft spot in the defense. The Lions use an undershifted defense, and they're running away from it and doing a good job. Last year, the Lions were number one against the rush. They're tough to run straight at. That's a bad sentence, but they are different. <laughs> we know what you mean, Jack. It is first down for Los Angeles. They started at their own seventh. If they run, they should run to the left. Here's a pass play by Jones. Steps up and airs it out long. And it is Billy one step shy of the ball. Covering on the corner was Wayne Smith. Stayed with him pretty well. Waddy is a flyer. I think, I think that we'll see a lot of that with them trying to link Wayne Smith, the left quarterback. Not that he's not a good defensive back, but I think in all probability, they'll try to give him a little business. They respect James Hunter an awful lot on the right corner. Here are some scores of other games. 10 to nothing, New Orleans over the Bears. A final score, two losses for the Bears. And Pittsburgh wins their second game, and they upset Cincinnati 26-20. And another final score for you. We'll give it to you in a moment. Here is the second down pass play and a sack. Bird Jones was sacked, and a flag is down. Jones was taken down at his own 37-yard line. William Gay was in there. He's starting in place of Joe Ehrman. Herman is available. There's Gene Barth, the referee. Offside Detroit, and that's going to uh, nullify the sack. Al Baker probably was the one who got across there too quickly. And the Lions last week got five sacks, so they really are up with a good pace as far as their sack situation is concerned in the first part of the season. That's a bad combination, I mean, a sack and an offside. It really is. And the ball goes out to the Los Angeles 49. Here's another final. Kansas City knocks off San Diego. San Diego gave the ball away early in the game too many times and lost 19 to 12. And Kansas City has an excellent defense. Hard to catch up when you play that kind of football game and give up opportunities. Second down and five with Tyler in the backfield. The fake to Tyler, the pass play in the flat again. It's caught. And the tight end, Ron Battle, hauled it in. That's his first catch of the year. A first down to the Lion 40. That time they were in double tight end offense with two tight ends trying to neutralize the unbalanced defense of the Lions, a play action fake, and he has plenty of time to throw short into the flat. Battle number 81 makes the reception and is finally tackled there by James Hunter, number 28, but a very high percentage kind of a pass, and they got it done in good shape. Two penalties have really hurt the Lions and kept the Ram drive going, which has now reached the Detroit 40-yard line. Billy Waddy is to the right. Barber the tight end on the right side. Bernard Denard is flanked left and in motion. Tyler in the backfield. A toss and a reverse to Waddy. A fumble. And Detroit has the pelota. Detroit got it. Doug Ignley should look like fell on the football, number 78. And William Gay, I think, ended up with it. He did? It yeah, he did. He surely did. William Gay, number 79. Europoy knocked the ball away from the carrier, Waddy, on the reverse. And Hank, it's a second guess, but why do you have to run that play when you're doing so well? Well, they chase a lot, and really the, the play itself, the call wasn't bad. It was just played so well by the defense of the Detroit Lions, and, of course, specifically English knocked it loose, and Gay recovered it. A few personnel, both teams. I think they probably will. Ball is at the Los Angeles 43, a first down for Eric Hipple. Dexter Bussey is the up back, tight end Hill in motion, a toss to Sims. Hill made a good sustained block, and down to the 40-yard line goes Billy Sims. That's a good block by the tight end. Yes, and Dexter Bussey, number 24, got out in good shape that time, and he got a good block out in front. They pick up a nice gain on the play. Here's the final score as the Cowboys get in the winning column. 24-7 over St. Louis. Both those teams are 1-1. One one. Here's another final score for you. The Jets beat New England by the score of 31-7. And yet another final. Philadelphia upset Cleveland 24-21.
Second down and to seven for the Lions. Here's the handoff to Bussey, and they couldn't clear out up front. Bussey got a couple. It'll be third down and four. It was Cody Jones and Carl Eckert on the tackle. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. We have six and a half left in the first quarter and no score. Fumble stopped the Rams on their last drive. Tracy Porter is the third wide receiver for the Lions. Here's a quickie outside and incomplete. Slanting in was Mark Nichols, but the ball was overthrown to both Nichols and to the other receiver. Jim, tight end David Hill. Jim Youngblood, number 53, did a good job of covering on the play. It was kind of a pick jack. Uh, they didn't uh, specifically knock anybody off, but they were trying to get in the way of the receivers, and uh, the ball was throw, thrown over the top and falls incomplete. Second punt by John James. Got the first one out of bounds at the seven. James out of Florida. His 12th year in the league. Johnson and Cromwell are deep, but they won't handle the ball. A line drive, and it goes into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. He kicked the ball to the left, trying to kick it out of bounds. But it's a lot better to kick left than right because if you miss the kick, it falls off your right foot and goes right down the middle, and you still have a good chance. A lovely day here in Anaheim. We have 6.06 left in the first quarter and no score. Mike Gooman, number 44, is in your picture. He's into the game for the first time. The Rams go from their 20. Stopped on a fumble the last time. Rams lead in this long-time series, 28-25 with one tie. Tyler the tailback. Barber the tight end on the left side. Denard was in motion, and Tyler gets outside for about three yards. Last week, as Burt Jones completed 17 passes, Denard caught one, and Barber the tight end only caught one. Well, I think they, they were trying to get the ball to the receivers, uh, to the running backs a little bit more, and to illustrate that point, Gooman got four, Wendell Tyler got three, and Thomas uh, halfback and fullback got four. So really there's 11 passes to the running backs and that's what they got last week and that's what they took. Purifoy, Gay, English, and Baker up front for the Lions. Five defensive backs. Second down and seven. Jones on a delay to Tyler. Nothing doing. He lost. Well, he gained the yard. It's going to be third down and six and a flag goes. A flag went down. When they bring in their five defensive backs, Bobby Watkins is the fifth back, and he plays the left corner. And uh, Wayne Smith, number 44, who normally occupies that position, winds up inside on the, as being the strong safety. Instead of only gaining a yard on the play, they pick up yards against the Lions out to the 29. Face mask penalty, five yards, number 60. We'll replay the down. Still second down. It's still second down. It's not an automatic first down. It used to be in the category of a personal foul and an automatic first down. It is second down and two. Good gambling down for Jones. And the way the backs are leaning, it might be something to the right side, run or pass. Here is a toss to Gooman. Gooman has to get to the 30. He rolled shy of the 30-yard line. Another flag goes down. And we have a holding call against the Rams. So they'll just automatically take that one. Ken Fantetti made the tackle on Gooman. And Fantetti can stop the play in a blink. He moves very well laterally, and he did a great job that particular time. Of course, a middle linebacker of the Detroit Lions, number 57, Ken Fantetti. Number 86 offense, holding. And the call was against Mike Barber, the tight end. They don't catch those veterans very often. You want some more scores? We're scoreless here in the first quarter. Elsewhere in the fourth quarter, the Los Angeles Raiders over Atlanta, 38 to 14, trying for their second in a row. In the first quarter, Miami jumps ahead of Baltimore, seven nothing. Five defensive backs on second down and 11 from the 19. 
And another flag. Both teams, I was about to say, even before they threw the flag, that both teams are sputtering a little bit here, aren't they? They are. I think they're trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage or either trying to guess as far as the uh, linemen's and blitzers are concerned. That time it looked like it was against the Los Angeles Rams. Dean Barth, the referee, has gained more yards than anybody on either team. He's going to sleep good tonight. False start, number 17 offense. That was against Burt Jones. They catch them with a head bob or some other action when they're under center. Second down and 16. We have 513 left in the scoreless first quarter. The quarterback cannot use any kind of a false motion of any kind, especially the use of his head to try to get the opposition offside. I think maybe that's what happened on the last play. Second down and 16. Gooman in the backfield. Tyler on a wing. Here's Gooman. Good yards up the middle. Across the 20, 25, 28 yard line. He's very close to a first down. A lot of times when the defense plays it loosely like that, they say we'll give them a few. They get a lot. Well, what he did that time, Jack, really specifically, he licked the soft spot of the defense. They were overshifted to the defensive right, a big hole on the left side. They changed the play to that handoff, and he popped through there in good shape for a big gain and very close to the first down. Alvin Hall and Wayne Smith were the tacklers, and it's third and two. A play comes in with Drew Hill, the wide receiver. They're down and two for the Rams. Tyler and Gooman with Barber the tight end. Hill and Waddy to the left. The running play. Tyler gets a first down. And he's out across the 35 to the 36. First down. And it was Gary Cobb the hitter. Gooman really did a good job of blocking Fantetti, the middle linebacker around the play. Got through there in good shape and cut him down. Gooman 44 blocking Fantetti 57. Watch it. See if you see it in the hole here. There you see, he got him low, but a nice hole and a good run by Wendell Tyler, number 26. Jackie Slater, the offensive tackle, made the contact with Fantetti, and then Gooman got him low and pushed him out of the play. It's a first down at the Rams, 36. Billy Waddy in motion, no score here in the first quarter. Here's Tyler cutting it back. And he is out to the 44, short of a first down. It's going to be third and two. Fantetti, the tackler, along with William Gay. Last year, Tyler had a fine season. He had a few injuries that he had to overcome. Tyler is 5'10", 198, out of UCLA. Used to have a lot more trouble hanging on to the football. Yeah, he's doing a much better job of controlling the football, and he's carrying it a little closer to his side with his hand over the point, which is basically so fundamentally sound, but that's what you have to do. Joe Ehrman is in. Al Baker comes out. Second down and two for the Rams. Barber goes in motion, and here's the running play to the rookie, Redden. And Redden is near the 48. That's the first down. So another good Ram drive is underway. 250 left in the first quarter. Hall, Alvin Hall, the free safety. Ben Teddy, the middle linebacker, the tackle. And Ken Hill that time, the left guard pulling on the play and doing a good job of blocking the left linebacker, Gary Cobb. But the Rams are continuing to do a good job of hitting the soft spot of the defense, which is the overshift. They're shifting one way, and they're running away from that overshift and doing a good job of uh, making running room for their back, specifically Wendell Tyler. And Barry Redden is the one who picked up that last first down. He stays in there. The rookie out of Richmond. Waddy in motion. A first down pass. Flag goes down. And the pass is broken up. A good piece of defensive work by Hunter. We'll check the play. Hunter was covering on the play. Looks like it's a penalty against Los Angeles. Bert Jones wants it explained to him. The referee is Gene Barth, Bob Boylston, the umpire, Burl Toller, the head linesman. The line judge is Jack Johnson, Jimmy Rosser, the back judge. 75, 75 offense, illegal motion, penalty refused, second down. Jerry Austin, the side judge, and Fritz Graff is the field judge. Herb Pinky is the one. He was in motion, the penalty refused, second and ten. The Rams last week had 11 penalties and the Lions eight. Tyler gets, oh, that Tyler over there? No, no that's, that's Redden, the rookie. Redden, the rookie along the sideline. They're alternating backs. Five defensive backs for Detroit. They have Bobby Watkins in there, second and ten. Jones with a pass play. 
over the middle and broken up and almost picked off. Diving in was the safety man, Ray Oldham. That was really a bad route between uh, Gooman and also Tyler. They were it looked like they were very undecided as to what they were supposed to do. And as a, as a result, they brought extra people into the area where he was throwing a football. It was lucky it wasn't intercepted. They announced the Raider victory over Atlanta. That was the reason for the crowd reaction. We have 209 left in this first quarter. There is no score. And it is third down and 10. First to penalty and the incomplete pass. Look at there as Washington gets ahead of Tampa Bay. 6 0 in the first quarter. Third down. Jones has time. It's open. It's incomplete. It would not have been enough for a first down. Drew Hill about a, had a bounce off his body. There was pretty good coverage there by the fellow you uh, were talking about. You said they might pick on Wayne Smith. And he's a, he's a very good defensive back, a youngster from Purdue University, number 44. The ball really was thrown a little bit behind. It hit him on the hip and bounced right off like it hit a wall. 2.04 left in the first quarter. No score. And Robbie Martin goes back to get the punt from John Misko. He averaged 42, almost 43 yards a kick last week against Green Bay. He tries for the sideline. The ball comes back into the receiver, Robbie Martin. He is to the 15, to the 20, and to the 21. That's all he got. Martin had averaged almost 13 yards a punt return earlier. A 40-yard kick, a 9-yard return, first and 10 for Detroit. No score. Say, I better get going or they're going to lift me? I don't think you can take that attitude. I think you just have to play your kind of a game and do what you can do best and not worry about who's going to play quarterback or being taken out of the game. Just got to do the job and the rest of it will take care of itself. Hipple is one out of three. He starts from his own 21. 151 left in the first quarter. Here comes Sands, and he ran right into the arms of Cody Jones. And then Carl Eckern stuck his nose in there. You know, Jack Reynolds used to play the middle. Eckern's playing there now. There's the final that drew the applause here. 38-14. All signs of his Raiders over Atlanta. First quarter score. Miami ahead of Baltimore now. 14 to nothing. They were at 7 nothing. Now it's 14 nothing. That may surprise you that they were up. They're changing, us, uh, changing the scoreboard quickly, aren't they? Miami's probably going to be good again. Sims got two, and there's the head coach of the Lions, Monty Clark. I talked to him yesterday, and he feels very good about his team. Here's Hipple with a pass play. He runs and throws. Caught for a first down. And across the 40-yard line. And look at Mr. Sims. I stuck it. For big yards down to the Ram 49. Second reception of the day and big yard. 28 yard gain. And again, it was a matchup between Youngblood, talking about Jim Young, Youngblood and Billy Sims. He had two play action fake, looks to his left, sets up nicely, then goes to the inside, throws the ball on the run. A beautiful catch by Billy Sims on Youngblood. Tough to cover a guy with that kind of speed if he had that much time to throw the football. And Pat Thomas, Thomas cut him down out of bounds at the Ram 48. We have 103 left in the first quarter. Extra Bussy and Horace King are in the backfield now. Teddy Bonchabrota is calling the play for the Detroit Lions. A quickie Former outside, and here's a, a pass play, and it's going to be downfield and uh, out of bounds incomplete. So a little trickery on the part of the Lions as they try to get it to Leonard Thompson. The ball thrown by Tracy Porter. Rod Perry was covered. On a Canadian football. Up with Rod Perry covering him. Tough to cover. A good picture here. A slant pass, and he goes right to the inside. Perry was in bump and run, but he took such a course inside he couldn't touch him. The ball was delivered right on the money, and it's a big catch by the Detroit Lions. They have a first down at the Rams, 32 at the end of the quarter. Fourth year out of Utah State. Sets up the Lions at the Ram, 32 with a first down. And the give is to the up back, Bussy, and he blows down to the 28. So no, but Carl Ecker and tackle him. I know that if I was in there and Sims was in the lineup, I'd be watching him most of the time. When quite an advantage for the other running back, Bussy. The one thing that you have to be careful of, however, you can't key him so much that somebody else is going to kill you. You just have to play the pattern of the defense, and you got to make sure that you read and respond very well. But he's a terrific running back and draws a lot of attention. Ball at the 28 of Los Angeles. 
Flip back, tight end, David Hill on the right side. Fowler the center and a pass from Hipple. As time hit as he throws, incomplete. So the rush finally got to him. Boy, those down linemen, and in this case it was Jack Youngblood helping him up. Just kept coming and coming and coming. Didn't look like he was going to get him, and then he did. And that's the kind of penetration you have to have. Both teams are concerned about being able to do a good job of rushing the passer. Specifically, the Detroit Lions, as I mentioned, got five good sacks last week, and they were pleased with that. Hipple is four out of seven, 97 yards. The ball at the Ram 28, and it's third down and seven. Now, they got a bump and run on the outside receivers. Now they're coming off on the left side, but it's still the same on the right side. They might try to go up on top. Tracy Porter is in as a wide receiver. Here is Hipple to the sideline, and it is no good. Out of bounds, out of bounds, as it was caught by Freddie Scott. Rod Perry was covering its fourth down. He did, he did change the play on the line of scrimmage. He had an opportunity with one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, tries to hit Scott, but in the process of coming down, he did not come down with both feet in bounds, and it goes incomplete. And I talked to Freddie Scott yesterday before the game. There we see a picture of him. Had a great visit with him, a very personable young guy. And he talked about his uh, approach for the game today, and he just thought that if they could play like they're capable and take what they're given, they'll do a good job and had a good chance to win. Bob Thomas kicked a 38-yard field goal a week ago. This kick from the 35 is good for 45 yards. And the Lions get first blood, and as soon as Bob Thomas kicked it, he threw his hands into the air. He knew he had got it right between the uprights. The alliance of quality and affordability is here. Here's Bob Thomas, who just kicked the 45-yard field goal. Deepest is the rookie, Robert Alexander. Actually, his second year, but he hadn't played before. He's out of West Virginia. He fumbled one last week against the Packers, which really hurt. But Gooman takes this on the 10. He's to the 15-20 and had an alley for a while. He's out near the 30-yard line. He had a seam that time, just didn't get there quickly enough to make take advantage of it and make more yardage on the play. Well, if there are NFL games played next Sunday, here are the games you will see. Either the Rams at Philadelphia. Philadelphia won their game today. Tampa Bay will play Detroit. You've seen that Tampa Bay and liked them a lot. Yeah, I picked them to win, and it's always tough to win in Detroit, however. The Cowboys who won today will be playing in the Metrodome against Minnesota, and they lost most recently to Buffalo. There's Monty Clark. His club leads 3-0. We also see Maxie Bond, who works for the defense. Quite a linebacker in his day. It's first down at their 30 for the Rams. They fumbled once earlier, the only turnover in the game. Here is a screen pass, and it's going someplace. Good yards. Out to the 47 for a big first down. Wendell Tyler used the blocks that he had for 17 yards. Specifically, Ken Hill, number 72, really did a great job of pulling on the play and getting a block. They had two tight ends in the ball game to control the linebackers. And Tyler waited for his block, didn't he? Yes, he did. And it was Ken Hill who knocked the guy to the outside. Watch the left guard, 72. Watch, he does a good job. See if we get him. Here he is. Bang, knocks him to the outside. And Tyler does a good job of picking up the block and running inside, even though he's got the ball in the wrong arm going down the left sideline. I'm glad that wasn't me he hit, I'll tell you that. It's a first down at the 47. Two tight ends for the Rams. And a first down pass. Airing it out long inside the 20-yard line. Incomplete. He tried to get it to the speedster, Billy Waddy. Back there covering Wayne Smith. Why do you say they're going to pick on him, Hank? I think, as I mentioned earlier, there's nothing wrong with him. Now, Smith does a great job here. Look at him step for step. And he doesn't get involved in pass interference when the ball is coming down. He jumps over the top, does not touch the, the receiver, and knocks the ball down. A beautiful play by Wayne Smith, number 44 from Purdue University. Been in the league for three years, has 4-5 speed, and he expressed that speed on that last play. Terrific job. The fifth defensive back is Bobby Watkins. The final score, California over Toronto 5-1. To the Angels started the day. Only one game behind Kansas City. There was no flag, and here's the draw. Look at Gooman go. With a 45, he got eight, and the Rams are on a roll as they trail 3-0. We have 13 and a half left in the half. 
to answer further your question about Wayne Smith, I think the reason they pick on him, they, they have great respect for Hunter, and they'd rather throw on Smith rather than Hunter. Basically, that's your, your off play. Boy, what a great looking hole by Gooman going through the seam. Good blocking on the left side by Panky and Hill and, along, and also the offensive center, Doug Smith, number 56. He made a good move to get away from Ray Oldham and was finally brought down after an eight-yard game. It is third down and two. That one really helped after the incomplete pass. Tyler trying to get the first. He got most of the yardage, and he got enough for a first down. He made it by a narrow margin as we view it. Tyler struggled. Evidently, he knew where he had to go. William Gay had him in his grasp along with Wayne Smith. And they did a good job of blocking the fine linebacker, Gary Cobb, number 53, the left linebacker on that side. I think they don't have to measure. He's got a first down. Well, you just said, but they didn't hear you, I would Jack. stake your life on it. <laughs> yeah, it would be mine, but you... See, they don't have a mic on you, Jack, so they had to measure. Tyler got the first down to the 43 of Detroit. You ought to be, be wearing a black and white shirt up here, oh, Jack. That's you. what you ought to do. They throw enough flags without me down. Well, it's a lot safer up here to wear black and white than it is down there, I guarantee it. Twelve and a half minutes left in the half. The Lions lead three to nothing. The Rams are going pretty well at this moment. We ought to do something left if they run because of the overshift. Here's a blitz, but it looked like Hunter came across before the snap count. And the running play gains little. Stan White made the tackle, but it looked like the sneaky uh, James Hunter out of Grambling got in there a little too quickly, and that's true. He was on a line of scrimmage. Uh, he tried to hide when he came across there. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> and there's no way he could hide as close to the line of scrimmage as he, as he was. The way it turned out, they changed the play. It looked like on the line of scrimmage, but it would have been better to run inside because he was on a line of scrimmage. But that's a guessing game that goes on, and sometimes you get right. Defense, offside. And sometimes you don't. He was offside on the play. That's the third time that the Lions have been offside. It's first and five. Here's another score. First quarter, the 49ers rolling after struggling. 14 to 7 over Denver. You don't get 14 points that quickly against Denver ordinarily. A good time for a play action pass. Here's the tailback, Tyler. Ooh -ooh. The ball came loose. The ball came loose. And Detroit has it. Tyler fumbled the ball. We talked about that propensity for coughing up the ball that he seems to have, and it cost him this time and stopped the drive their second turnover. Yeah, we're just bragging about him. Isn't that the way it is? But he hit in there good, and the response, the response of the Lion defense was excellent. Looked like Joe Ehrman got it. Number 74. Watch Ehrman. By... Ehrman was playing on the center that time and responded very well to the block by Smith. And it looks like he did come up with a football, and the Lions have it. First and 10 at about the 37. Doug English and William Gay made the hit, and Joe Ehrman came away with the ball, number 74. The second turnover for Los Angeles, and the Lions are at their 38. Here's the toss to Sims running right. It's wide open. He is out to the 49-yard line. It was wide open over there. Why was it so clear? Well, young blood came up the field. The defensive left end, number 85, and uh, Dexter Bussey really made a fabulous block on young blood. Watch it now. Watch him going to the outside. Look at the block he gets on young blood. Knocks him down beautifully. Cromwell is out there to make the tackle, but misses. And uh, Billy Sims is that kind of a ball carrier. He makes people miss. He's terrific. Thomas and Eckern finally stopped him at the 49. It was an 11-yard gain and a first down. Hill on the wing and uh, the power play up the middle. And the ball came loose, but the play had Sims been whistled the there. I tell you, Sims, the the Sims, by the way, uh, also has fumbled frequently in the past. You know, Lions are doing a good job of taking advantage of what they see. The Rams are sometimes in an overshifted defense, and any time they see that, they go back away from the overshift. Other times, when they line up on a 4-3, they try to run right at the middle, and they're doing a good job of not wasting plays, which is so important. That was an innocent-looking five-yard pickup, wasn't it? But again, they ran right up the middle. Final score, Boston still in the race. Beat Detroit 6-4. Here's a toss to Sims. Oh, look at those moves. A first down. A first down to the Los Angeles 39. Jim Youngblood stopped him this time. And Ron Yeri. I'm, I'm sorry. That's, I've got the wrong. 
73. But the uh, Russ Bollinger, the right guard, really pulled and did a good job of going right through the hole. Did a terrific job of cleaning it out. Here we see it from another angle, from ground level. Going to the C number 73, Bollinger, in good position, goes right through the hole and gets a block. And Billy Sims does the rest with a good run. Here's a toss to Bussy. Look at that change of directions. He's inside the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. And got some good yards. A pickup of six. Mike Fanning tackled him. Ballish while the number 76 did a good job that time. Now the final score. Atlanta's still in the race. They beat Cincinnati by the score of six to one today as we await the Dodger final. Atlanta started the day two and a half behind the Dodgers, but only two out on the lost side. I tell you, this offensive line, Monty, Monty Clark yesterday said they've all grown up together. They've all got four and five years of experience, and they're really are doing a good job of working with each other, and they're showing on this drive. David Hill in motion, a toss to the tailback, and Horace King gets outside, gets close to a first down, and he did get a first down as they mark his forward progress. And they're chewing up the yards now. Nolan Cromwell got him out. And Bussy, number 24, did another fantastic job on Youngblood, number 85. Coming up at halftime, Brent Musburger and Irv Cross will bring you scores and highlights from around the league. And we'll have a look at next week's game between two top ten college football powerhouses. Number three ranked Nebraska at number eight ranked Penn State. You'll see that at halftime. Along with scores and highlights and a lot of finals. The ball is at the 28th of the Rams. Now with the over overship, they should run left if they do run. Hippo gives it to Sam. He is popped at the line of scrimmage by the linebacker sticking his nose in there. Eckern guessed right, didn't he? Yes, he did. And, of course, number 71, Reggie Doss, did an awful good job, too, on the play. But they hit the right spot. It was a soft spot. They had a one less man in that area. They just not did, did not do a good job of blowing people off the line of scrimmage. And for that reason, he had no place to run. We have exactly nine minutes left in the half. The Lions have the only points. They lead three to nothing. They lead on a 45-yard field goal by Bob Thomas. Ronnie Clark squinting into the sunshine. Second down and 11 as Sims lost one. They haven't done much with the tight end Hill. Here's the pass long, and it is incomplete. Try to get it to Bussy. Look at the heavy traffic down there. Pat Thomas batted it away. It was thrown too high, but Pat Thomas responded very well to the ball when it was thrown. And I don't think sometimes people realize that once the ball is in the air, a good defensive back is going to be able to cover 20 yards at least. And that's exactly what Pat Thomas does from the left cornerback position. He comes all the way over from there and knocks the ball down. Beautiful play by number 27, Pat Thomas. He didn't mind either that he ran into uh, Dexter Bussey. He was playing the ball, got the ball, and it's third and 11. The extra defensive back is Leroy Irvin for the Rams. And they take Eckern out of the game when they bring in the fifth defensive backs. David Hill, the tight end, splits right. It's third and 11. Hippo has time. He's shot. He got away. No whistle. We still have the play going. The pass is incomplete. It was spectacular. And a great try by Leonard Thompson. Fourth down. Youngblood. Cromwell. We're back up field defending. Hippo did a great job of avoiding the rush. It looked like Jack Youngblood had good had a good grasp of him that time. And he Manning did. did too. I was surprised. Youngblood was on his shoulder pad. Yes, he was. Sometimes when you're in within the grasp, as long as he seemed to be, the official calls it down at that particular point, but that time he didn't. This will be another field goal try. Hippo will hold. The ball will be at the 37, a 47-yard try after a 45-yard success previously. He thinks he has it, and he did. It's six to nothing. The two were shaking hands before the ball went through the uprights. Hippo and Thomas knew they had the six point for Detroit. A five and 46 yards. And the deepest man is Robert Alexander out of West Virginia. Thomas kicks this one to the wing back. Coming back with it is Gooman. He's across the 20 to the 25, 26 yard line. You could see after that 23-yard return, he didn't have that burst of speed that the usual kick return men do. 
Don Greco of the Lions was downfield for the tackle. So with all of the work, and after that drive, which you see here, eight plays, 33 yards, with all the work the Lions have done for six points, the Rams could come back and on one play get the lead. And they're very capable because they have the ammunition. They have some big play people, and they can do it any time they get a big play. We have 8-19 left in the half as Jones checks in. Barry Redden, his rookie running back, is in there with him. First down pass, and it swung out here to Tyler. Made a good move and gets to the 31-yard line. He got five yards. And it was Stan White, the linebacker, first there. We take a good look at it from ground level this time. The center, Doug Smith, was coming out. Watch the center come out. The last time they ran the play, Hill came out. This time it's, it's uh, 56. Watch him. He doesn't get there quite soon enough, but in spite of that, Tyler does a good job of waiting for the block and pay, runs upfield and makes a nice gain of five yards on the play. Second down and five, therefore. Zuman and Tyler. Denard on a wing. Here comes Tyler picking his way and moved out. Shy of a first down by about a yard and a half. James Hunter made the stop at the 34. James Hunter was there. Well, next Saturday on CBS Sports, be with us for the NCAA Today. Followed by great college football action. Number three ranked Nebraska. They beat New Mexico State 68-0 yesterday. Takes on number eight ranked Penn State. Led by quarterback Todd Blackledge, who threw four touchdown passes. 49-14 over Rutgers yesterday. That's at 3.30 Eastern time next Saturday on CBS. Third down and a yard and a half for the Rams. Toss to Gooman. He throws left-handed. It's intercepted. You can't trust those left-handers. The pass intercepted by Stan White, the linebacker. He threw it right into his push. That's really a surprise because, you know, he's got very good judgment. We were watching him throw the ball yesterday in practice. And... Uh, he looks like he's got a good arm and has good judgment normally, but that time he had no chance whatsoever. Watch him. The linebacker coming. He should have been satisfied to eat the ball that time, but in spite of that, he threw it anyhow, and Stan White came up with the interception. Great field position for the Detroit Lions. First and 10 on a plus 31. They're at the Los Angeles 31. He was hit by Hunter just as he threw, and that is the third Ram turnover. Billy Sims is in there. The fake is to him. And the pass is intercepted. Oh, it's knocked down and should have been intercepted. The linebacker, Eckern, was back there and had a wonderful opportunity to intercept. It was just a little bit too high, Jack, for a linebacker to make the catch. He tried to spear it with one hand, but it hit it. It looked like it hit a wall. It bounced off uh, quite a ways. But he made a great play. He had good depth going back to help the cornerback, Rod Perry, with double coverage. Yeah, that's the one thing you would uh, admire about the play, that he did drop off that deep, right? Right. Second quarter, we've got a tie game. The 49ers and the Broncos, 14-14. Hipple is 0 for his last five throws. It's second and 10. Well, try, try again. And he overthrew this one, and it is incomplete. Incomplete is the call. Those officials watch you every place you go. It was Johnny Johnson who thought he had it, but he knew he didn't. And Dexter Bussey was open on the play. You couldn't tell really who he threw the ball to. He went right over the top. And, uh, of course, Johnny Johnson looked like he thought he made the interception. There you see Hippo throwing over the top. And there you see Johnson, number 20, but he did not have possession of the ball. Third and 10 from the 31 after the interception. Nothing doing. The extra back is in there, Leroy Irvin, defensively. Hippo hasn't run yet. He throws. Oh, terrible throw. It's intercepted. Coming back with it is Cromwell. Cromwell gets the ball back for the Rams. That's his second of the year. And Hippo is having a terrible time with it. You can't tell me, Hank, when a, when a guy is 0 for 7 with one intercepted like that, He's not thinking to himself, well, I wonder if the coach is going to go with it. He tried to get it to Leonard Thompson. The mistake, Thompson he made, the, yeah, the mistake he made that time, he's got good running ability, great escapability skill, 
and he had a great seam in the middle. Look at all the room. He, all he had to do was step up into the pocket, which he did, and run with the football. But in spite of that, he threw it off balance, way over the top, and it's intercepted by Nolan Cromwell. 6.23 left in the half. Cromwell was a quarterback at Kansas. He intercepted a pass last week against Green Bay and got number two here today. Looks like a flanker that time, the way he made that catch. I think we'll see Danielson possibly. There you see him warming up. He was 80% 4 or 5 yesterday. Uh, a fine quarterback from Purdue University. Well, the Rams have uh, made three turnovers, but they've avoided the touchdown. They trail 6-0. They start from their 26. Jones are going to put it up. He avoids the sack. He throws on the run, incomplete. He made a bad throw, and he could have run for good yards. Wendell Tyler had a hand on the ball, and the flag is down back way away from the play on this side of the field. And ba Baker, number 60, got good penetration that time, had a good grasp, but he slipped away and got rid of the ball in good shape. We have an ineligible man downfield against the Lions. He had passed the line of scrimmage, evidently, an illegal forward pass. The line of scrimmage was the 26. If we get to see it again, we'll see how far he ran before he threw the ball. Loss of five and uh, loss of down, too. Illegal forward pass. He threw from beyond the line of scrimmage. It's lost it down in five yards. Second down. Second down and 15 from the spot of the foul. Second down and 13. Barry Redden checks in. Second and 13. Jones to Tyler. He rolls across the 25, and it's going to be third and long for the Rams. Stan White made the tackle. We have six minutes exactly left in the half. Interesting uh, stat in the first the first uh, part of the game the Detroit Lions had possession on first and ten seven times they ran six times on first and ten and threw only one pass on first and ten the Rams on the other hand had it eight times on first and ten ran four times and passed four times good balance. Lions lead six nothing. Five thirty eight left in the half third down and eight for Los Angeles. Jones with Baker. That's a fumble. Now incomplete. Incomplete. Incomplete is the call. Al Baker was there on top of him. I didn't see Gene Barth give the forward pass signal, but he indicated that the play was dead, perhaps after the fumble. Her Panky, the left tackle, did not did not handle number 60 that time. Al Baker, there you see him. He pushed him right into the quarterback. And that's what happened on the play. Let him get too much penetration, which is it's tough to <laughs> tough to block him because he's so quick. Here's another good ground level angle. His Look arm, at Panky trying to block him, but he knocks him right back into the quarterback. His arm was moving forward. John Misco is the punter, and Robbie Martin is inside his 35. So the Lions will get it back in the normal course of events. There's a really a good shot by our director, Joe Assetti. And Martin took it on the 30, 35. He got to the 39-yard line, and that's all. A 42-yard kick, a nine-yard return, the tackle by the linebacker, Jim Collins. We have a flying down and a discussion, stopping the clock with 5.16 left in the half. Well, the officials have been busy today. They talked to Stan White. I think they'll just take the ball. You know, Jack, there's seemingly a lot more penalties. Let's take a listen. Illegal motion, the wide man on the left side of the line, penalty refused, first down. You know, the games that we have done last week, specifically the Lions, we didn't do the game, of course, but they had eight penalties last week, and the Rams had 11. Well, the Lions have the ball. They have a 6 nothing lead, 5-16 left in the half, and they'll start from their own 39. 
out of Purdue. He takes over for Eric Hipple. Hipple hit a cold streak, and Danielson comes in as he did last week against Chicago. Out of the eye, a toss to Sims. A flag goes down, and it stops the play. Hipple had missed his last seven. Ball start, number 70 offense. Well, a lot of times that happens, too, when you put in a new quarterback, you get the different rhythm. Yeah, you change the rhythm, and it makes a difference. Hipple had missed his last seven, had one picked off. He was four out of 13 for 97 yards, one intercepted. Last week, Danielson came in hot. Yeah, he was four for five, 63 yards, and he helped him win that football game last week. But he's got a lot of poise and has done a great job for the uh, Detroit Lions, especially before he got hurt. Bussey has carried four times, 13 yards. He's in the backfield with Sims. Here's Sims out in the flag, covering the, catching the screen, moving beyond the 40, and uh, short of a first down by about six yards. Mike Fanning caught up to the play. Boy, Bollinger, 73, and uh, Fowler, 65, the center and right guard, both of whom came out, did a great job. Here we get another shot from the ground level. They watch for 65 and 73, Fowler and Bollinger. They both get out of there in good shape. Good block right on the offensive tackle. There you see him. Billy Sims, there you see the blocks out in front. Sims cuts back to the inside and does a good job of, of picking up yardage on the screen pass. Second down and six. The pass play is intercepted. Oh, drop. Dropped in midfield. Walking into it was Pat Thomas. He darn near walked away with it. Billy Sims wound up making a catch. It Billy? looks like Jack, yeah. He sucked the ball right up. It looked like he was going to be an interception, but he got the ball. On the ground, uh, he caught the ball. Looks like he's going to be short of a first down as we view it. They're going to have, they're going to, have to measure. Watch this. Look, I don't... See, and as, as it was falling, he was alert enough to make the play. Unbelievable catch. Unbelievable. It is third down and inches. Third down and inches. At the 49 of Detroit. We might see a play action pass here, Jack. Oh, they give it to the tailback. Sims or hurdles for a first down. Right to midfield. Bussy up front blocking for him. 345 left in the game, and Cromwell was there. And he met him in midair. Look at this, Washington, 18 to six over Tampa Bay. Well, that's really a surprise. I, I thought Tampa was gonna be an excellent team. Of course, it's a long way from being over with uh, just two games being played, but they're off to a bad start with two losses. Yeah, they lost to Minnesota. Now they're behind in this game. First down for the Lions. Here comes Sims from a different angle and big yards inside the 40. That's a first down run down to the 37 yard line before Johnny Johnson and Nolan Cromwell tackled him. And that's what people did to the Rams all last year. Well, that time they, they watch they, they from a from a ground level view this time. They ran a trap play with a left guard pulling. Watch it. Look at the good job on the middle linebacker 55. Elias the left guard did a terrific job and. Uh, Billy Sims popped through there for a big game. Well, he's already gained more than he did last week. 33 yards last week. He's 12 out of 58. He's caught four passes. He's 12 for 58 yards. And he's caught four yards for 94 passes for 94 yards. Stop by Cody Jones. Doesn't say much for training camp, does it? When a guy can miss all the training camp and come in and be as effective as he uh -huh. has been, he's really something. Morris King went to the 33. He got four. Look at this. Baltimore 17, Miami 14 in the second quarter. Miami was ahead 14 to nothing in that one. I tell you, that Cush is going to do a great job with Baltimore. I'm sure he's given them the dimension they've, they've needed as far as discipline is concerned. I don't know how many games they're going to win, but he'll do a good job. We have a timeout call at the two-minute warning here, and I'm sure the players on both sides on such a warm day appreciate a breather. When we resume, it'll be second and six for the Lions at the Ram 33. Yes, I did respond and wore a lot of blue and gold here today. Houston is ahead of Seattle, 7-0 in the second quarter. 
Rams have had three turnovers and the fans here haven't had much to root for it. Second and six for the Lions from the Los Angeles 33. King and Bussey in the backfield. Hill the tight end on the right side. Danielson is the quarterback. He's going to put it up. He throws. It's caught by Hill for a first down. And he is out of bounds. And he ran. Oh, brother. He, he crunched a cameraman over there. He apologizes, but the fella can't wake up to hear the apology. Boy, he just blasted something. I want to tell you something. We, you know, we sit so far away in the stands and we watch so much on TV that we really don't know how big, fast, strong, powerful, crunching people these are. Here's the pass play to Hill. Here's another view of it. Crossing pattern, David Hill, number 81. And Johnson in, is in hot pursuit. He finally drives him out of bounds. Watch the hit here. Watch the hit in the sideline. He runs right over the photographer. You don't even see him. There he goes. Just so, hope he isn't hurt. That's the way it looks to the photographer right now, that blank that was on your screen. It's a first down at the 22-yard line. And he's up on his feet, by the way. The fellow was hit. He's okay, apparently. Here's Bussy, the up back, trying to get to the 20. That's all he did. It'll be second down and eight. Now the cameraman is still being tended to over there. And sorry to see that. Jack Youngblood with that tackle on Bussy. David, David Hill has a brother who was in the television business, does a great job. Jim Hill played for us in the senior bowl game, played for San Diego. A terrific defensive back, but uh, David Hill is his brother. Why didn't he hit his brother instead of that <laughs> poor guy? Over there? I couldn't find him. He's up in a press box. We have 120 left in the half, and the Lions, who lead six to nothing, have second down and nine at the 21. Another pass play by Danielson. Dumps it off short. Good for big yards, and uh, down to the 10 yard line goes Horace King. Carl Eckern tackled it. A lot of poise that time by Danielson. He was trying to hit somebody downfield, but he hit the, the back that he was faking to, Horace King, number 25. He knew exactly where he was going to be, and when he uh, had to dump the ball off, he found King, and King did the rest with a good run, and the ball is down to the, about the 11 yard line. A good play by Danielson. It's first down and 10 at the 10. It is not first and goal. I don't know why they haven't called timeout. Only 40 seconds left in the half and clock running. Here's the toss and Sims who can throw the ball and running right goes out of bounds and stops the clock and lost some yards. He lost three. Youngblood chased him out. Jim that is. I tell you the defense of the uh, Los Angeles Rams that time did a great job of pursuing. They skated along the line of scrimmage and took good angles and knocked them out of bounds. A good defensive play by the entire left side of the Los Angeles Rams. 33 seconds left in the half and the Lions wasted some time didn't they without calling a timeout. Yeah I'm surprised they didn't call timeout. They lead six to nothing with those 33 seconds left in the half. And now they have second down and 10 not second and goal. Second down and uh, 13. Both teams have three timeouts. Danielson looking for six into the end zone back line overthrown. He tried to get it to David Hill. That stops the clock with 28 seconds left in the half. The Rams really have to put more pressure on the quarterback. He's getting a little bit more too much time to throw the football. You could see Tracy Porter in there talking to him. Perhaps Tracy found a route that he'd like to run. It is third down and 13. Leroy Irvin is the extra back for the Rams. Carl Leckern is out. Third down. Tracy Porter lines up in the backfield. Daniel Sentinel looks, throws, incomplete out of bounds. It'll be fourth down, and so with 24 seconds left in the half, Pat Thomas covering on Leonard Thompson. Another field goal try. You know, that was really a kind of ridiculous pattern that time. Thompson, 39, went down and made his break about a yard in front of the goal line. Had he made the catch, he still would have made the touchdown. Had he taken the route a little deeper, he still had 10 more yards to go. He would have had more of a chance to get open on the play. This will be a 30-yard try by Bob Thomas. He's two for two today, 45 yards and 46 yards. And he was one out of one last week against the Bears. This will be a 30-yard try. The ball will be held by Hipple. Trying to make it nine to nothing. 
That's what it is, and there was no pressure at all by the Rams, was there? They did nope. nothing on Nothing at all. They hardly made contact on the line of scrimmage as the lead goes 9-0 Detroit. The Lions kept the ball for almost five minutes, as you see. 11 plays, 48 yards. Thomas has kicked 30, 45, and 46. It's 9-0. Robert Alexander waits for the squib kick, and he bobbles it around, picks it up on the 10, 15, 20-yard line, 25, 30, 35. Good tackle. A very good tackle was made for Detroit by Bobby Watkins. He just stood his ground, and he let the runner come to him. That was a fine play. It was, and Alexander did a great job of running the football that time. He kicked it around a little bit. That usually happens. What happens in the cover team starts to relax a little bit, thinking somebody's going to make the tackle, and they don't, and it winds up being a nice gain for the returner. Alexander, number 35, in this particular case, gets up into the seam in good shape and was finally tackled there uh, by, by Watkins. By Watkins. Number 27. The Rams put it up, and it's caught over the middle to the 45. That's a first down to midfield. Well, maybe falling behind 9 to nothing is what it has taken. And catching the ball was Tyler for a first down tackle by White and Cobb. But now we have no more. The clock says no more time, but a timeout has been called by the Rams. There's more time left in the half. Barring a penalty, this will be the last play of the first half from the Detroit 49. A first down for Jones, who has to set his club. Yeah, he's going to throw the ball deep. They have three wide receivers, the old uh, clock play. Oh, there he goes. Throw the ball deep downfield. Hopefully he gets some kind of a pass interference or a ricochet. They didn't. Interception by the Detroit Lions, and the first half has terminated with the Detroit Lions winning, leading 9 to nothing. Alvin Hall walked in and picked it off on the final play of the first half. I don't know whether it's the heat or what, but these uh, Rams aren't really perking along on all eight. Okay, so the Lions on three field goals, 30, 45, and 46 yards, lead 9 to nothing at the half. We turn it over to Brent Musburger. Well, they asked the crowd here to uh, wear a lot of blue and gold. They've done that. But now the crowd is asking the Rams to get something done, and they've had three turnovers in the first half. And the Lions lead by the score of 9 to nothing, trying for their second win of the year. Hank Stram, I thought I saw something that really disturbs me or would disturb me if I were rooting for the Rams, which I'm not. In the last field goal, it looked like the Rams just said, go ahead and take it. Nobody did a thing on the line of scrimmage. I think, really, Jack, what happens in that kind of a play, you have a quarterback holding the ball for the, for the kicker, Hipple, and there's always a chance in that situation, we used to like to do it in Kansas City, to fake the kick and go for the field goal because everybody's coming. I think they were a little concerned about that, and that's why they didn't provide more of a rush. On the other hand, too, it's quite warm. The temperature is uh, in the low 80s out here. And uh, down there in the playing field, there's probably not much uh, of, a breeze, uh, of a breeze and fresh air. But the Rams look like in the second half, they may be very, very weary. They've made three turnovers, and I can't help but go back to Hank to the one drive they had going. And then they tried the end around. That really changed things, didn't it? Well, it did, but it was a feast or famine kind of a play. It's a misdirection play, and it, it's a kind of a play that if it goes great, it's super. If it doesn't, you're not going to make yardage. You're it, telling me I'm second-guessing, right? Yeah, no, no, no. I just say that that's what happens in that kind of a play. I think basically the big difference in the game really is the fact that the Lions have executed very, very well. They've made fewer mistakes, and they have had better field position than the Los Angeles Rams. Last week against the Green Bay Packers, the Rams had terrific field position in the first half. They didn't have it in the second. You never know what's going to happen in the second half, but I think really the big difference so far has been the turnovers and the fact that they have not had good field position in the first half. Well, the Rams have another uh, road game coming up. They're going to be at Philadelphia next Sunday, and if they don't come back and do something, of course, they're not very far behind. It's 9 to nothing here in favor of Detroit, but if they don't hurry up and get something done, they'll be 0-2 when they head to the city of Brother Nine. Well, we check the stats, and we see that the Lions have the edge in most every department. Total yards 200 to 122. One Detroit turnover and four Ram turnovers in the game. That's the difference in the first half, Jack. And I mentioned the other thing, that the other difference was really the bad field position. But Detroit's doing a good job, and they're taking what they're being given and executing very well, I think, so far. 
The reason uh, for the fourth turnover was the pass intercepted on the last play of the first half. It really didn't amount to anything except that it prevented the Rams from getting any points. And both uh, squads are back on the field. We've There's seen Ray a lot. Malavese, he's wondering how to get him going. They've shown some good things, Hank. Well, I think I think uh, we've seen so many crazy things happen so far this season in the second half. We might see another very exciting second half here. You talked to Malavese and to Monty Clark yesterday. What did you learn from them? Well, Monty Clark felt very good about his team. He said that uh, he felt confident that his squad has worked very hard. They're working as a unit. They're improving. They're progressing. They're making a lot of progress. And uh, it was very obvious that he felt very confident going into the football game. On the other hand, Ray Malavese, I think, has had a, a tough week. And uh, But talking to the players, they all swore that they were going to play an excellent game, that last week's game was just one loss. Uh, in a season of 16 games, they had a lot of games to play, and they felt they could win a lot of games. So we're going to see what happens in the second half. Robert Alexander is back to return the second half kickoff. And they have a little trouble getting started. He's in the baseball portion of the playing field here. And Bob Thomas will kick it off. Thomas, a longtime Notre Damer. He thumps it to Alexander, two, three yards deep. He may be making a mistake coming out here. And he did not get to the 20 yard line. He took it three yards deep. The kick was high. The crowd groaned when he started bringing it out. Steve Doig made the tackle for Detroit. Next week, these Rams, as we mentioned, travel to Philadelphia where the Eagles bounce back with a win today. Tampa Bay plays at Detroit. It's tough to win under the dome in Pontiac. It really is, although the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat Detroit last year and got into the playoffs. And Dallas plays in the dome at Minnesota in the Metrodome. Those games, check the local listing uh, in your area. They should run right if they run. And here's the give to Wendell Tyler on the slant. He comes across the 20, and there goes the flag. Starting from the 18, Tyler went for about four yards. We'll check the flag and a call against the Rams. William Gay made the tackle. Curtis Green has a bad ankle, and uh, he's not available today to the Lions. They call that the silver rush up front. They're good. Yes, they are. These holding penalties are seldom turned down. There's Gene Barth. He's an executive of the oil company, former baseball player. Number 78 offense, holding, still first down. Jackie Slater, the right tackle, was called. Second down and 19. But Burt Jones has a lot of ground to cover. He gives it to Tyler again on that slant. And not much doing. He came out near the 13-yard line. Jumping on his back was William Gay along with Dave Purifoy. You know, the defense of the Lions is very quick. And they're in conjunction with that, they're very fast. Purifoy runs a 4-7-5-40. Green is a 4-7. Gay is 4-8. Baker is like 4849. That's good moving for those big people, and they react and pursue extremely well once they locate the football and react to the play that was called. Duman is in along with Tyler. He's just been unable to get the ball to Denard. He's off to the left side. And a pass play, not much pressure. He dumps it off short. It's caught underneath, and a first down. A big third down play to Duman. And let it clear out and dropped it off underneath. It was a delay. Gooman come, coming underneath. And he did an excellent job of running. He knew exactly where he had to go for the first down. A 19-yard gain. Here you see Burt Jones in the pocket. He had good protection that time. Stepped up and threw a little bit behind. But he got the ball in good shape to Gooman. A tackle missed. But he finally made the necessary yardage uh, for the first down. And the safety men, Ray Oldham and Alvin Hall, were there, but the Lions let him get off the hook on that third down play. The rookie Redden is in the backfield. Here's a fake reverse. Jones on the run, and he is sacked, and he loses about six yards on the play. That's the second sack of Burt Jones. Dave Purifoy first there, and then Gary Cobb. You know, the timing of that reverse was very poor. It did look like Wendell Tyler, who was coming back in motion. The execution of the play was not good. It was a little slow, a little ragged. 
Burt Jones had to wait for Tyler to come across, and by the time he did, the linebacker, Gary Cobb, was right there, and of course, pure for 75 makes the tackle. But he could see the ball, Hank. He had it uh, head high. Yeah, it was a cellophane paper play. You could see right through it. And as a result, it's second down and 16. Every time the Rams start to go with conventional stuff, they've tried some trickery and it hasn't worked. Here's Tyler. He is hooked and brought down. And he's short of the 30-yard line. It's going to be third down and long, third down and 12. William Gay got him. Here comes some scores for you to feast upon. At halftime, the 49ers, 21 to 14 over Denver. Washington staying ahead of Tampa Bay at the half, 18 to 6. In third quarter, Miami having their hands full with Baltimore, 21 17. Yet another for you in the third quarter, Seattle staying with Houston, 7 7. Extra back is in. Bobby Watkins, third down and 12 for the Rams. Jones steps up and tries to run. He does. He has a first down as he slides down across the 40. Another big play on third down. Bobby Watkins covered it. He was trying to hit Wendell Tyler that time, 26 in the left flat, but in the process of running his pattern, Tyler fell down. And so uh, Burt Jones, very wisely, good protection up front. There you see him step up into the pocket. Panky knocks Baker beyond the passer that time. And number 75, 79, Gay goes beyond. He runs right up the middle and makes the necessary yardage for the first down. Burt Jones. Well, this may have the makings of something with 11-20 left in the third quarter. Two big third down accomplishments. Jones had a little difficulty getting that shoelace tied without calling time. A first down from his own 42. Barber the tight end in motion. And here on a bootleg on a busted play, Jones in big trouble gets out of bounds. And he lost some yards on the play. He lost about three. James Hunter bumped him up. You know what happened on the play? I think Burt Jones just spun the wrong way. Both backs couldn't be wrong. They both went to the right. Both of them watch it. See, all three people went to the right, and Burt Jones went to the left. I think he thought the play was designed to go left, and maybe he got confused with the, uh, with the numbering system with Baltimore and the Rams and turned the wrong way. That can happen very easily. People always blame the running backs. Those quarterbacks are to blame, I'm sure, at times. Oh, yeah, that time all three guys couldn't be wrong. Burt Jones had to be wrong that time and went the wrong way. As a result, it's second down and 13. Lions in that four-man front, no blitz. Jones throws beyond midfield. It's caught for a first down. Mike Barber, he is tough in traffic. Alvin Hall tackled it. He really is tough. He's a very dependable, steady, excellent uh, blocker. Does not have great speed, but he has terrific hands, and you get the ball close to him. Here you see it again. Burt Jones favors the right side. That sometimes Ehrman is going over the top gets the ball high and a beautiful catch by Mike Barber. Detroit's not putting on the pressure they did in the first half. Well, they put a little situation. pressure on him that time, Jack, but he escaped the pressure and went to the right, see? First down and uh, 10 at the 45 of Detroit. Here's the big draw and the pass play long down the middle and it is overthrown. A good defensive play was made. Covering was Smith on the corner again as they try to get it downfield to the fleet. Willie Miller. And Alvin Hall, number 35, the free safety, got a good jump on the ball and was right over there to help on the double coverage. Had no chance on the play. It is second down and 10. Here comes a new quarterback. Milwaukee beat the Yankees 14 to 1. And Vince Ferragamo is in. Vince Ferragamo, and evidently this is what the fans want. But I've seen this too often in too many cities, Hank. It turns out to be a mess. Yeah, it's amazing. For some reason or other, the fans always want the quarterback who is sitting on the bench to play. Now, Ferragamo has done a great job here with the Rams in the past, and he's allowed to give them the spark they've been seeking. We'll see what happens. Second down and 10. He's going to pass. He swings it out here, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted. Almost walking into the ball was... The defensive back, Alvin Hall, but the pass could have been, should have been caught. You know, Vince that time get, went back, uh, he was a little bit too high and almost fell down going back into the pocket to, to deliver the screen pass on the outside. He James, wasn't set James, very well. James Hunter was after him. 
It is third down and 10 at the Detroit 45. 10 10 left in the third quarter. The Lions leading 9 0. I think they have to run some more draws and traps on Baker, especially. He rushes so tough on the outside. You've got to slow him down a little bit by trapping him some. And there's contact made on the line of scrimmage. It looked like uh, William Gay was the first one across. He may have been drawn across. He was. That happens when you put in a new quarterback. It'll be third and 15. You know, when Vince Veracom... 60 offense, ball start, still third down. When Ferragamo was a quarterback before he went to Canada, mm -hmm. they, they averaged six, almost seven yards a, a pass reception. They dropped last year, the Rams did, to 4.9, which is a dramatic difference. Third down and 15 for the Rams with five Detroit Lion defensive backs. Straight four-man rush with a stunt. And Ferragamo spins away from the sack. Looks and throws, and it is incomplete. And that was nowhere near the receiver. It's time for the Rams to punt. Now they boo for a gun. Well, Panky, Panky that time could not handle Baker again. He's having a hard time trying to block Baker, and a lot of people in the league do, of course, but he's... Uh, letting him get a lot of penetration, put a lot more pressure on Ferragamo, and flushed him right out of the pocket. Baker is doing a great job of coming off the line of scrimmage. He lines up a little wide. That's why you really have to trap him, son, to slow him down. Here's the punt by Misko, and Robbie Martin watches that go out of bounds at the 25. That wasn't a very good kick, so a 26-yard punt. Lions still have the 9-0 lead, and they have the ball at their own 25. Bert Jones is along the sideline. You see Ferragamo, number 15, loosening up, and they say that Jones has popped a hamstring. And if that's so, I will have to wait and see whether or not he can come back. If it is a hamstring, he won't be back. From the 25, here's the pass by Danielson, and he overthrows Fred Scott out there in the flag. So these quarterbacks are not burning up the NFL today in this game. In the eighth inning, the Dodgers are having their hands full, 3-3 with Houston, and they have to win to stay two and a half ahead of Atlanta. And the Giants lead in the fourth inning over San Diego, 4-1. You know, one thing that happens when the second quarterback comes into the game, he doesn't get nearly as much time and attention during practice working with the number one unit, and the timing and execution is different, and I think the same is true with both, with both quarterbacks, Danielson and also Ferragamo, so far. Here's Danielson with a screen, and a flag has been thrown as the pass play is good for first down yards. Yards to Billy Sims, but a holding call against Detroit. Danielson is protesting about it, and the referee said, nope, got you. It looked like Dorney was, was, was really squeaking against uh, talking to the official that time, and it might be Dorney. We, we'll wait and see. Number 70, the offensive right tackle. The referee usually keeps his eye on that right tackle. That's part of his responsibility. 70 offense, holding, still second He called it, Hank. It was Keith Dorney. He was holding against the rush of Jack Youngblood. Folks are prone to do that. 9.41 left in the third quarter. He was talking to that official like he was chewing gum. He was really giving those jaws a massage, wasn't he? Extra defensive back, Bobby Watkins. Or excuse me, Leroy Irvin. With Kyle Eckern out of there. He might do something up the middle. There's a big hole up the middle. Second down and 20. Long down the middle and caught for a first down. And beyond the 40-yard line it goes. And it was Scott this time coming in from the flanker position for 26 yards. You saw that lane, didn't you? Yeah, there's a big hole. Here was, we get another, another isolated look. Watch, watch Freddie Scott. He goes down and breaks into the opening. It was double cover. He anchors right in the hole, makes the catch. The ball is right on the money. And he's finally tackled there by Cromwell. But he makes enough yardage for the first down. A good shot there by the fine quarterback, Gary Danielson, number 16. Out to his 41-yard line. A wing formation with the tight end. Uh, Hill on a wing and in motion now. Here's a toss to Sims. Sims turns it upfield and he gets to midfield and he got nine yards. If the Rams are getting weary, and they've been on defense for quite a while, if they are, that's when a fellow like Sims will kill him. Well, you know, the thing that's happening, really Dexter Bussey, I can't say enough about the kind of a blocking job he, he, he has done. He's been fantastic. We see a picture of Ray Malavese. He's got to be concerned about the way his squad is playing. 
Nine yard pickup. This could be a good gambling down. Second down and one right at midfield. You only get the ball on second and one about three times in a game. A lot of times it's good to gamble and try to make a big play. Sims gets a first down. Even when he's hit, he gets that final surge for another five yards, which he did to the Ram 45. George Andrews tackled him. We haven't mentioned him very often. No, and, and of course, uh, he's got a good lean. Look at this. Houston 10, Seattle 7, third quarter. The ball at the Ram 45. We have eight minutes left in the third quarter. Sims has carried 15 times, 70 yards. And here's the other running back with it, Horace King. And King moves down to the... He moved down to the 34-yard line. That looked like an innocent affair, but he picked up six, almost seven yards. And that seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. That was a trap play, Jack, a trap meaning that you permit the defensive lineman. There's a... Monty Clark, full of happiness, smiling, feels good about the way his team is playing so far in this contest. King got seven. Danielson on second down. Runs out of the pocket, has running room. Trying to get out of bounds, and now he throws. And it is incomplete. Incomplete. Leonard Thompson, he was a little indecisive that time. Wasn't it? Leonard Thompson was his intended receiver, Nolan Cromwell covering. I thought he could have gained a few yards at least and gotten out of bounds. Well, next Saturday on CBS Sports, be with us for the NCAA Today, followed by great action, number three ranked Nebraska, taking on number eight ranked Penn State. They both won big yesterday. And the Lions, the Lions are led by quarterback Todd Blackledge. He had another big day yesterday. Yeah, he threw four touchdown passes over Rutgers, 49 to 14. Had to be impressive. And Blackledge has thrown 12 touchdown passes in three games. Here's Danielson on third down, airing it out long, and it is incomplete into the end zone. He got it downfield intended for Leonard Thompson. That was on third down, so they sort of botched up that series. If he'd have run on second down, Hank, he could have gotten enough for the first down, probably. Yeah, it looked like he had an opportunity to run, but there was pressure coming from the backside, and I don't think he would have made much yardage on the play. And I think in the final analysis, really, he was uh, smart to get rid of the ball because he wouldn't have made much yardage anyhow had he run on the play. And now the punt from James. This will be his fourth of the day, John James. Here again, he's on the left hash mark. He should try to kick the ball to the left. Because, again, if you kick it to the right and it slides off your foot, it winds up being a very bad kick. You kick it to your left and it slides off. It goes right down the middle. He's kicking it to the right. He hangs it high, and it is inside the five. And it is down inside the five-yard line. They got good results with 6.52 left in the third quarter. Junior was downfield to down the punt at the Ram four-yard line. Half points. A fumble, approximately two points, and a sack. One more sack than the opposition is usually worth three points. The ball has been marked at the Rams' three-yard line. The Rams have four turnovers in the game. They better not get any down here. A pass play by Ferragamo, and it was thrown incomplete. He tried to get it out to Willie Miller, and pretty loose coverage by Wayne Smith over in the corner. Yeah, he had a chance for the inter for the uh, play that time for the reception. The ball was just thrown a little bit too high, and you're going to find that to be true, I think, until he gets the rhythm. Anytime, as I mentioned earlier, the second quarterback comes into the game, uh, the timing and execution usually isn't as good, and it might improve as they go along. Field goals by Bob Thomas, 30 yards, 45 yards, 46 yards. Detroit ahead 9 nothing at the half, and ahead 9 nothing with 6.47 left in the third quarter. Bergamo took this team to the Super Bowl, hands it off, and the play rides out to the 10 with Tyler. Wendell Tyler wrestled down by Doug English. And Bill Gay is playing the defensive right end now for Al Baker. Another score here, Baltimore 17, Miami Dolphins 24. A lot closer than everybody thought. Tyler picked up five yards. Monty Clark again, and he mentioned to me yesterday talking about the fact that he's very, very happy with Teddy Marchabrota. I think it's a great blend, and he just feels this is going to be a great situation for the Detroit Lions. Third down the running play to Gooman, and he did not get the first down. 
He did not get the first down. And unless the Rams want to gamble, they're going to have to punt. He was covered by Gary Cobb, tripped up. Gilman tried to squirm for the additional yards, but couldn't get him. You know, the Rams, again, I, I hate to belabor the point, but field position is so important. So far in the second half, they got the ball on the minus nine, and then on the minus four, it's harder to get anything done when you're in the soup trying to get out of there like that. Robbie Martin stands at midfield waiting for the Misco punt. But on the other hand, you have to give the Lions an awful lot of credit. The kicking has been very instrumental, and also the defensive work has been outstanding. Here's the fourth punt, a low snap. Fourth punt by Misco. It's a good one, and it drives Martin all the way back to the 37, running right. Changes his direction. Tries to get outside. His good speed gets him some yards, and then he lowers the boom and gets out to midfield. A fine return after a 52-yard kick. An 11-yard return in the tackle by Mel Owens, and a flag has been thrown. They talk it over. A flag back up at the 10-yard line. Holding against the receiving team, the Lions. And now the Rams will get a first down out of that. Unless it was after the after the kick. Let's see when it occurred. I think maybe it was after the kick. After yeah. the exchange. That's what it was. Otherwise, it would have been a first down. So the Lions are going to be penalized instead of being at the 50-yard line from the spot of the foul they're penalized back to the 27. We have a post possession foul post possession number 54 on a hold first and 10. Meanwhile there's another flag way back up at the 10 yard line. I don't know what the heck that was about. We have a timeout called with 515 remaining in the third quarter. Lions led nine to nothing at the half and that's the score now. They start at their 27. Bert Jones a while ago we saw him massaging the back of his left leg in the hamstring area. He, he's apparently okay Hank or they'd be icing down that injury wouldn't it? Yeah you would think so and it might be that he'd be back in the game. Uh, we'll wait and see what happens. Meanwhile it's Gary Danielson. Eric Hipple started. Danielson the second Detroit quarterback. Dexter Bussey. No gain at all. He wrestled back by Los Angeles. No gain at all. He ran into the arms of Reggie Doss, number 71. The defense changed their alignment right before the snap of the ball. They confused the blocking assignments, I think, of the Detroit Lions. And for that reason, Reggie Doss was able to get through there in good shape, along with Carl Eckern, the middle linebacker. Second down and 10. Clock running here in the third quarter, 440 remaining. Leroy Urban checks in for the Rams. Danielson's going to put it up, throws, and it is caught to the 35. And out to the 37-yard line. Running with the ball was Porter, Tracy Porter out of LSU. George Andrews tackled him. Here's another isolated look. Watch, he delays a little bit. Tracy Porter, number 89. Look, he goes to the outside, and then comes underneath after the linebackers get good depth, and he runs all the way across the field. The uh, strong safety, Johnson misses the play, misses the tackle, and uh, Porter does a good job of picking up yardage on the play. Third down and one from the 36-yard line. And Sims gets the first down and more. And the ball is loose. And it is picked up by the Rams, and the tackle is made at the 27-yard line. Rod Perry picked up the loose ball. It just simply flew out of the arms of Billy Sims. You know, at that time, he didn't even have a blocker. Bollinger, the right guy, was supposed to pull on the play, but he didn't get there. He popped through the hole in good shape. Look at an end zone shot. Here you see him. I like Bollinger. He gets knocked off, but there's still a good hole. Eckern he, comes over. Watch this. Eckern comes over. The ball is scraped loose. Pat Thomas gets a piece of it. Rod Perry picks up the bouncing ball, goes down the sideline. It's finally knocked out of bounds. He was really knocked out of bounds before that. And the Rams finally have good field position on about the 27-yard line. Now they must take advantage of it and get some points on the board if they're going to get back in this contest. They trail 9 to nothing. We have 3.42 left in the third quarter. It's after Detroit 27. That was the Lions' second turnover. Motion by Denard. They haven't been able to get the ball to him much. Here is the running play going very deep. And a pickup by Tyler of four or five yards to the 22. Five yards. Oldham finally finished off the play. 
Anytime you get, you, you try to get outside, Jack, you must get a good block on the linebacker. You must get containment on the line of scrimmage. If you get a slow leak, anybody getting penetration is tough to run outside. That's what happened on the play. Tyler had no chance whatsoever. And Odom, number 23, finally knocked him out of bounds. Good picture of Jack Youngblood, who is playing like gangbusters. Everybody is very impressed with the way he has played so far in the early part of this season. He's out of Florida. This is his 13th year. He's as good as ever. Second down and five for the Rams with Ferragamo. Newman and Tyler in the backfield, and here's a pass play into the end zone, and incomplete. And uh, the fans thought there was some interference. They tried to get the ball to DeMar, and he couldn't get away from the defender, James Hunter. Stan White, 52, is blitzing on the play. And again, Ferragamo saw the blitz coming, got rid of the ball as quickly as he possibly could, way over the top, incomplete. Third down and five. Very big crowd on hand, somewhere between 60 and 65,000. Nine to nothing, Detroit leads. Bobby Watkins is in for the Lions defensively. Somewhere they have to tap those defensive ends to slow them down. They're really getting up field tough. Ferragamo's pass is thrown incomplete. Try to get it to Tyler, drawn double coverage. And it's fourth down and a field goal try, forthcoming from Michael Lansford. Lansford kicked three out of four extra points last year, two out last week, two out of two in field goals. His longest was 32 yards with Cromwell holding, and don't forget he can throw. This will be a 39 yard drive. Michael Lansford. And he kicks barefoot, as you could see. And he feels he can get the ball up quicker, kicking barefooted, than with a shoe on. And he missed. He missed off to the left. So not much is going right for Los Angeles. It's still nine to nothing in favor of the Lions, and we have 3:20 remaining in the third quarter. It'll come out to the 20. Well, we know now we're going to read Frank Corral's name in the newspaper tomorrow. <laughs> He's left the Rams, and Lansford just missed from 39. We just saw Clark. He's got a kicking decision to make this week, too. Here's the inside handoff, and uh, only a yard or two for Sims. That trip with Jim Youngblood there. Sims, while the ball came out to the uh, 22, that was the line of scrimmage. Now it's to the 24 second and eight we have less than three minutes left in the third quarter and the Lions lead on three field goals by Bob Thomas 30 yards 45 yards in the second quarter and 46 yards in this quarter Leroy Irvin is in defensively second and eight for Danielson the up back fussy really wrecked by the linebacker Andrews who is blitzing and came through the right hole. And Mike Fanning did a good job, number 79. He's the one who got good penetration. I tell you, he's playing terrific football. We talked to him yesterday at practice. He was very excited about playing this game. He thought, really, they played very, very well today. I'm sure that they uh, are disappointed the way things have gone so far, but it's a long way from being over. But he just felt last week's game was a game where the uh, Green Bay Packers made about five big plays, and that was really the difference in the contest. Speaking of big plays, Gary Danielson needs eight yards on third down. And he's going to put it up. Goes, and it is caught for a first down at the 40-yard line, and Danielson was on the money to Nichols, to Mark Nichols for 17 yards. Nichols didn't catch any last week. He cashed in here. We got another picture from ground level. Boy, Danielson really did a good job of uh, delivering the ball right over the top of the defensive people. Watch it. It just barely goes over the top, and Mark Nichols, 86, cruises in the open area, makes the play, and a big first down for the Detroit Lions. Great execution on the play between Danielson and Mark Nichols, and good pass protection. First down, and the fake to Sims, the pass play. And it's dropped off short. Good yards. And out to midfield, a nine-yard pickup, and now the whistle sounds. That's the big to Billy Sims. This was to Billy Sims, and he was wrestled down by Eckern and others. He's a little angry. Eckern got a, gave him a punch that time, not deliberately to try to hit him in the body. I think he was trying to punch the ball out, and he maybe gave him a little massage in the side that time in the process. But it was not deliberate. 
No, no, not deliberate. No, accidental. Yeah. <laughs> we have less than a minute left in the third quarter. And the clock starts again. We're down coming up to the 52nd mark. Here the Dodgers beat Houston to stay two and a half ahead of Atlanta, which also won. Sims has carried 17 times, 73 yards. He's caught five passes. Second down and one, and a gambling down. And here's the pass by Danielson way downfield, and it is a flag has been thrown, and let's see who's who and what's what. Did they say interference? Evidently, it is going to be interference against the Rams for riding, that was against Leroy Urban, for riding the intended receiver, Leonard Thompson, out of bounds and intercepting the ball. That's going to be first and goal for Detroit. And look at Malavese. Boy, look what a sensational play that was by Urban, too. But the uh, official downfield calls Defense it pass interference. interference. Number 47, first down. First and goal to go. Watch this play, folks. This one is, we may be one of the more controversial of the year. Here's another picture from ground level. Look at the ball, flight of the ball way up on top. We don't see the two people downfield yet. And it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell what happens on the play. I thought that the pass should have been incomplete out of bounds, not in the possession of either man. Here's Billy Sims trying to get into the end zone, and he cannot do it. Now watch it on the isolated camera. Here we get another good shot of it. Look at it. Urban 47 covering on the play. The ball is thrown over the top. Now what does he do that's so wrong? He's waiting. Oh, yeah. yeah he, he went up on top and got it. Yeah, he got him while the ball was in the air. No question about it. A good call on the part of the official. Pass interference on the play. No question. So the line of scrimmage was the Los Angeles four. Sims right has here. taken it to the two. And it's second and goal. We have 26 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's Danielson rolling and throwing and a touchdown. A touchdown to his tight end, David Hill. That's his second touchdown of the year, and that's going to make it 15 to nothing. I tell you, he made a great catch that time. The defensive back was all over him. All of, Lucius Smith was covering on the play. I don't know how you could cover him any better than that. Hill just made a sensational catch. The ball was thrown per perfectly. Another ground-level view. Watch this. Play action pass. Danielson, young blood, gets up the field. He throws the ball over the top. Watch it. He's covered well, but the ball is thrown beautifully right out in front. There's nothing really that 20, the 23 Lucius Smith could do, and you have to credit the Lions for a great executed play. Bob Thomas was two out of two in extra points last week. He's kicked three field goals today. He adds a point, and that makes it 16 to nothing with only 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Well, the Rams are way behind and running out of time. This is Bob Thomas teeing it up. He's kicked three field goals and now an extra point. Back uh, waiting for the Thomas kick is Robert Alexander. Rams need a lift. A flag goes down and I think Detroit was offside on the kickoff and Alexander hesitated for a moment then got rolling came out to the 16. But I think Detroit was offside on the kickoff. Downfield with the tackle, Steve Doig. I think they're going to have to kick it over. We have 12 seconds left in the third quarter. And the Rams offside, and the Rams, hopeful of a better kick return, are going to receive once more. Let's watch that interference call inside the five against Leroy Irvin. We've got a good view from ground level. Leonard Thompson, the receiver, Irvin, covering on the play, but you see him hit him right in the smush right before the ball is coming down. Definitely pass interference on the Los Angeles Rams, specifically Leroy Irvin, number 47. And now the kick will come from the 30-yard line and a better chance for Alexander to return it. We have only 12 seconds left in the third quarter. You get a close-up look at Bob Thomas. That's a great picture, too, by Joe Assetti, our director and uh, producer, Chuck Milton III. Oh, no, no, he didn't need that. From the 30-yard line, the kick will come. The score is 16 to nothing, Detroit. Detroit won last week. 
against the Bears by the score of 17 to 10. No flags this trip. Alexander is back to the four yard line. He's to the 10, 15, 20, so they've already profited from it. He comes to the 25. The Rams have three seconds left in the third quarter, and flags go down as they mix it up. What's going on here, fellas? A little extracurricular. Jim Collins, number 50. They're playing around on the playground. And he was the number two draft choice in 1981, played his collegiate football at Syracuse. 6'2", 230. He's a great competitor and an excellent linebacker. Let's see. Conduct fouls, number 80 blue, number 50 white. They offset, first down. Offsetting penalties, first down for the Rams at their own 25 as they trail 16 to nothing. Time for one play in the third quarter. Are they going to score, Henry? It's a long way to go. They've got to make something happen to get back into this game. Not too long ago at 342, Left in the third quarter, Perry got that fumble back to the Detroit 27. Ferragamo's pass, and it was caught. Oh, there's a little mugging going on. Yep, there's a flag. Thank you. Wayne Smith held on too long against Willie Miller. That was really a bad play on the part of Wayne Smith. He was licked to the inside, was deserved, deterred probably because he was licked, and uh, kind of hassled, tried to hassle the ball away from the receiver. And they declare a penalty on the play. The pass play came out to the 45, so a pickup of 20 yards. And Willie Miller, number 82, was a receiver on the play. There's 15. And the ball to the Detroit 40. One thing uh, in a game like this, you do not want to do anything to stimulate. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 44 defense. To stimulate the motivation of the team that you're playing uh, who hasn't had much of an opportunity here we see it on an iso camera miller coming inside 82 waits for the ball makes the catch smith watch it he's giving him a little rub down there isn't he <laughs> we're at the end of the third quarter with the score detroit lions 16 rams nothing invitation to Frank Buck's private world of adventure. Bring him back alive. A special preview Friday at 9. Eight quarter to the sideline and it was caught. Caught at the 14 by Willie Miller. Two in a row for him. Over Wayne Smith again. The ball was thrown right on the money that time. The pass protection was good. Karagamo had a chance. Here we see it from another view. He goes back into the pocket well. Steps up. And uh, Purifoy goes beyond the quarterback. He came through there in good shape, but was not beyond the quarterback, which permitted Ferragamo to get the ball to Willie Miller. So now that's the end of the third quarter. They had put more time back on the clock, and now we're at the end of the third quarter, and the Rams will resume in possession, still trailing by the score of 16 to nothing, but they're going to be on the move. of Detroit and they give us to Tyler he knows where to go he's inside the 10 yard line and got big yards since the start of the second half in Milwaukee last week for the Rams and they have been outscored 52 to nothing they're trying to get in now as they trail 16 to nothing and six yards for Tyler 49ers leading in the third quarter 21 14 over Denver And it is Washington and Tampa Bay slugging it out. 18-13, fourth quarter, and the Redskins on top. Second down and four. Ferragamo to the rookie back, Redden. He gets a first down, and it's first and goal to go. Barry Redden got it. Good takeoff on the left side with Tanky, the left tackle, Ken Hill, and Doug Smith. We'll see another view of it from ground level. But there was a good surge by the offensive line. Watch the left side. They come off the ball in good shape. Redden, number 30, follows the blocker into the hole, moves the pile back a little bit. Ken Hill, number 72, was out in front, but he picks up a good gain on the play, and the ball's on about the two-yard line. And the Rams need uh, nothing less than a touchdown. They trail 16 to nothing. 
Full house backfield. Here comes Tyler, and he couldn't get started. By the way, Detroit, the silver rush, they call their front four, had a great goal line stand against the Bears last week. They really did. They really did. And it looked like, looking at the film, there was a very, very close call on the touchdown. But they, they, they did not call it. And uh, the Rams, I mean, I should say the Lions, did a fantastic job in a goal line stand. Ray Oldham and uh, Gary Cobb prevented the touchdown on that Tyler run. You know, from the full half backfield, I'm talking about with three backs in the backfield like the Rams are employing at this time. They ran to the right. If they just fake that play and the quarterback keep the ball, he would go in standing up there chasing that much. It is second down and goal from the one. Tyler in motion, a pitch to Gooman. He gets the touchdown. Mike Gooman gets the first touchdown for the Rams in a long, long time. It's 16 to 6 with 13.06 left in the game. After the pass to Miller, the roughing call and another pass to Miller. Here's another ground ang angle of it. Dennis Hera, number 60, pulling on the play. Gooman carrying the ball to the right, sees the seam and bangs in there tough in there for the touchdown. It gives him finally six points. Good job of blocking on the right side. Jackie Slater, Dennis Hera, and also Mike Barber, the tight end. This kicker, Mike Lansford, missed an extra point try last week. Cromwell hold it. Sixteen to seven. With 13.06 left in the game. So Ferragamo has moved his club down with the help of a penalty to put the Rams on the board. 13.06 left in the game. Bob and Sandy Davis needed to win. Jaunt by Gooman. 16 to 7 the score. 13.06 left in the game, and Lansford will kick it off. Looking for an onside kick possibility, but the Lions are all up there on the line of scrimmage close, anticipating that kind of a play. He's going to kick it long. Robbie Martin is deep along with Alvin Hall. And Martin takes it on the 10, 15, 20. It opens up to the 25. He's down at the 27. And Detroit had better do something with the football now to regain a bit of momentum. Jim Collins downfield again for the Rams. Yeah, he's, he's murder, isn't he? Tonight on CBS starts with 60 minutes, followed by a special preview of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Then it's Alice, followed by Trapper John, M.D. That's all tonight on CBS. You like that seven bride. That's your favorite, right? <laughs> Trapper John, I like that very much. But you're always traveling. Here is the first down toss to Billy Sam. He breaks it across the 30-yard line and gets good yards. We're under the 13-minute mark left in the game. Carl Eckern has made an awful lot of tackles today. He and George Andrews combined. Started from the 27. And a pickup of six by Sims. Eric Hipple was the starting quarterback, and then Gary Danielson finished in the first half. And he's in there now. Extra Bussy, the up back, and Hank says he's been doing a great job of blocking. If they run, they probably will run left where that defensive alignment is. Here they come. Bussy couldn't clear out, and Andrews, the linebacker, jammed up the play, and Sims tumbled to the curb. It's going to be third down. All the right play, but the defense responded very well. The execution was very poor offensively, and uh, no gain in the play. Great play by their right linebacker, George Andrews, number 52. He's out of Nebraska. Nebraska will be playing Penn State next Saturday, and you'll see it here on CBS. Monty Clark expressing some concern on the sideline. Billy Sims, 80 yards. Wendell Tyler, 62. Sims has carried it four more times. Third down and four. No gain on that one. Might look for the tight end to get a little business here. Porter goes in motion. Pass play to Porter. He caught it, and he, let's see. As he have a first down, it's critical as to where they mark him out and where they put the ball down. He does, as we see it, he does have a first down. Leroy Urban was covering over there. They're going to bring the markers all the way across the field. I think he has it, Hank, but it's tough to call. Uh, yeah, I thought when he when he first went out of bounds, he did not make it, but the official marked it, and it looks now like now that he might have made it. 
We'll see in a minute. And as you're at the Detroit 37. Stop the clock with 11.22 remaining in the game. First down, and I share your opinion, Hank. I didn't think he went out of bounds quite at that spot, quite at that yard line marker. Watch this, another good shot of it. Look at it. Well, he Look. had the ball with forward progress right to the sideline marker. Yeah, he marked it where the ball was. It was a good call on the part of the official. Well, it was nice to be able to look at it again and clear up all doubt. It's first down for the Lions at the 37. They lead 16 to 7. Nichols is a wide receiver to the left side. And he goes in motion. Here comes Sims. And sticking his nose in there was Johnny Johnson on the hit. And Billy came out to the 40. Cody Jones did a good job, number 76 that time. And that time, one of the few times all afternoon, the Lions ran into the overshifted defense and didn't succeed in making uh, as much yardage as, as they would have had they run to the other side. Gary Danielson, the Lions quarterback, has a hot hand. He has completed his last five. 10.50 remaining in the game. Clock running. Sims got four at second and six from their own 40 for Detroit. 10.40 left in the game. Clock running. Motion by Nichols again, and the pass is jumped off. And a big hit by Youngblood, the linebacker. And he took uh, the wide receiver Norris down and then gave him a little bump. And Norris said, what did I do? Nice. Youngblood said, well, you caught the ball and don't do that anymore. Not in my area, especially after the way things have happened in the first half where a couple of big plays were run on Youngblood and they were, they were big gainers. There was only a yard gain there. It's third and three. That was a tight end that time, Norris, number 80. Exactly 10 minutes remaining in the game, clock running. The ball at the Detroit 44. Third and two. You know, overall, this has been a good defensive game. Both teams have played extremely well defensively. Two tight ends, David Hill and Ulysses Norris. Timeout called by the Lions. A charge timeout against Detroit with 9.46 remaining in the game. They want to make sure about this play. Third down and two from their own 44 when we come back. Detroit's on top. I was known as one of the meanest players in hockey, but I didn't deserve that, right? <laughs> right. I'm just a nice guy who comes in and has a few light beats. Oh. Strange to say, but if there are NFL games played next Sunday, here are the games you'll see, either the Rams at Philadelphia or Tampa Bay at Detroit or Dallas at Minnesota. That's following the NFL today, next Sunday on CBS Sports. Philadelphia won today. And the Lions are leading today, and Dallas won their game. Third down and two for Detroit. There's a keep by Danielson. He throws. It's caught. It's a first down. A first down and more by Bussey down to the 44-yard line. Well, they surely trust him, don't they? And they have every reason to trust him. He's really done a terrific job. Bussy, number 24, 6'1", 210. Here's another shot of it from the end zone. A play-action pass. Not a very good fake. He looks downfield, jumps to the right side, sees Bussy open, 24. He scampers to the inside and does a good job of running, picks up the necessary yardage for the first down, finally tackled by Cromwell, number 21. But Bussy has been very outstanding in a variety of ways this afternoon. On a wing is the white, the tight end Norris. He comes in motion, a toss to Sims. Sims makes his cut, runs by people, breaks loose. Inside the 30, 25, 20. He's down for a first down at the 15-yard line by Pat Thomas. We keep talking about Bussey. He just made another great block on number 53, the linebacker, that time. And it provided uh, Sims with the uh, opportunity to go inside and make a beautiful run. Watch this again, another end zone, end zone shot. Watch Bussey. Look at that block he makes on the linebacker, 53. Splatters him on the play. Sims does a fantastic job of going through the revolving door, makes Ooh. the tackle, makes the great play, and is finally tackled there by Pat Thomas, Ooh. number 27. 29-yard gain on the play. Ooh, that hurt. Man, he really drilled him to the turf. That's smarts. Woo. 
We have 8-18 left in the game and the clock running first down for Detroit at the Ram 15. And King is in there now. Motion by Hill, the tight end. And here's Bussey struggling to get back to the line of scrimmage, which he did. And now we have eight minutes left. Boy, the two tackles that time did a good job. Mike Fanning and Cody Jones, along with the middle linebacker, Mike uh, Carl Eckern. Here we see Ray Malavesi. Game 7:45, 44 left in the game. 16 to 7, they trail. Rams nine points behind. The Lions second down. Sims has gone over 100 yards, 112 on 22 carries, his 13th 100-yard game. They got a bump and run on the right side. He might, have might try to throw the ball up on top on the right. No, he's going left. There's a toss to the tailback, and uh, nothing doing as King only got back to the line of scrimmage, and so the Rams are toughening up. Nolan Cromwell was right up there close that time. No chance to block. He makes a good play on the play to the left side. Monty Clark now. On the sideline, getting plays from Teddy Marchabroto, who used to be the coach of the Baltimore Colts and has a very good offensive concept, and I think is blending in very well with that of Monty Clark. They're talking about Nolan Cromwell with that sign, Cromwell's Clinic, Doctor of Defense. It's a loss of a yard on that play, third down and 11. Leroy Irvin checks in for the Rams. Eckern is out. We have 6.45 left. Clock is running. If the Lions get some points, the Rams will have to get two touchdowns to beat them. Here's Daniel Sander, a blitz, throws, and he threw it away intentionally. He threw it at the feet of Horace King. He did the right thing. Do they call him? Yeah, they're going to call him unintentionally grounding. The referee won't buy what Danielson is saying. George Andrews was blitzing on the play. They also had a safety blitz, and Andrews would have given him a shot in the backside had he not delivered the ball. The only thing really he could do. It's fourth down. Well, let me see what the what the call was there. Look was at Andrews. Not. Look at Andrews, 52. He's in hot pursuit. He gets rid of the ball and gets a push in the process by Andrews. And that's what he was moaning about. Here's the uh, field goal try of 33 yards. It's good. Thomas, 30 yards, 45 yards, 46 yards, 33 yards. He's having a great day. And the Detroit Lions lead by the score of 19 to 7. Here's Bob Thomas, who has kicked four field goals and an extra point today. Here's Robert Alexander. He's out of West Virginia. He'll hope to spark the Rams and need two touchdowns. We have 6.27 left in the game, 19 to 7, Detroit on top. Hank Stram and Jack Buck with you from Anaheim. Thomas kicks it rather deep to Alexander, one yard. He forgot the ball. 5-10, not very good field position. For Alexander and the Rams, the ball. Now the Lions are just congratulating each other. That Calicut was down there along with Jimmy Williams. Calicut's down there in every play. I don't know how he gets through those people all the time, but he always does. Well, he does, doesn't he? And he was the most valuable player on the specialty teams last year and got the award by, from the Detroit Lions. Well, look at him. He's reckless. He's under control. Look at this. And gets in there in good shape and makes a hit. He made the first hit and then got the help that he needed by Williams. The ball's at the 11-yard line. Ferragamo is the quarterback. After Bird Jones started and pulled the leg muscle, Ferragamo from inside the five drops it off short. Good yards on this pass reception. And it was Wendell Tyler stopped by Gary Cobb. That was a crossing pattern with the backs that time. Tyler came out of the backfield, came across the middle. Linebackers got good depth, and for that reason, they will throw inside. Here's another score. Washington 21-13 over Tampa, fourth quarter. Look at this, Miami 24-20. Boy, they're playing a tough game in, in Baltimore, I think, isn't it? Here's on second and one, the pass play and a loss on the play. Well, that one hurt. A little pop pass out here, this time to the uh, rookie Redden, the fullback, and they lost yards, and it's going to be third down and six. It was read by Gary Cobb, and he did not miss. I tell you, the, the Lions really have a, a very quick 
and very fast defensive group, especially the defensive line. They're responding very well to what they see. That game you're talking about, Hank, is at Tampa Bay. The Red Sea at Tampa Bay. Third down and six. How about Miami and uh, Washington? Pass play now by Ferragamo. Long over the middle, wide open. And it is caught by Miller. He's going to score. The defensive man fell down. No flags. The score counts. And now the Rams need only a touchdown. 85 yards. The man who fell down was the extra back, Bobby Watkins. Bobby Watkins, a rookie from Southwest Texas, Texas State. 5'11", 182, a number two draft choice in 82. But it was man-for-man -man coverage. Man-for-man -man coverage from another ground-level view. Here we see Willie Miller breaking into the open area. And you see Watkins watching fall in pursuit. 27, he had an angle, but in the process of trying to get situated to make a tackle, he slipped and fell. And Willie Miller goes all the way for the touchdown, number 82, 85 yards. We have a replay screen here, and the fans enjoyed watching it again up on the scoreboard. Well, previously, the Lions kept the ball for 6 minutes and 27 seconds and came away from a, with a field goal. But now, that touchdown makes this one exciting. It's 19-13. Lansford with the extra point try. It is good. 19-14 with 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Remaining. Well, the Rams were blanked at halftime. They've scored two touchdowns. Now they trail by five. Willie Miller's father just called him to congratulate him on the touchdown. Is that what that phone call is? Yes, father to mother. I think his family is calling to make uh, congratulations. Beautiful play. 4-4-4 four, four, four left in the game. 19-14, the Lions on top. Three plays, 89 yards, and an 85-yard Touchdown pass play. Robbie Martin is deep, and he takes it on the 12. 15-20, and the tackle is made at about the 22, and the Rams are flying now. The ball came loose, but the play was whistled dead. Downfield with Mike Riley, the linebacker. The Lions can't sit on it, Inc. Oh, no, they can't do that. The last drive, only three plays, 89 yards. And Willie Miller hauled it in his first touchdown of the year. He might have been talking to his agent for that phone call, too. You know? <laughs> now the crowd gives the support that the Ram defense wants. They have 435 left in the game. Nice crowd roaring. Sims and Bussy in the backfield. Tight end in motion. Hill. There's Bussy. He just got back to the line of scrimmage. That's all. And the Ram defense is flying. Rod Perry tripped him up. There was good penetration up front by the Ram front four. Reggie Doss, number 71, really got up the field in good shape and slowed him down. He didn't make the tackle, but he forced him to go inside. And by the time he tried to get inside, he got good help from the inside people, and they made a good play. Second and ten. Play comes in from the sideline with Tracy Porter. Sims is out. That'll be three wide receivers for the Lions. No sense trying to fool anybody. Everybody knows they're going to throw in second down and ten. Nichols comes to the left. They like to throw, like to throw to Hill in this situation. They'll be watching him closely. There's a pass play, and it is caught, but there is very little gain, if any, on the play. Leonard Thompson caught it, and Johnny Johnson was all over him. I tell you, that defense is all fired up. They're all juiced up. I'm talking about the Rams. And really, they've done a good job most of the afternoon, really. Four-yard pickup, third down and six. We have 3.20 remaining in the game. The clock is running. It'll be less than three minutes when they snap the ball. Eckern is out. Irving comes in. Third down and six. At the Detroit, 25-yard line. Bussy is the lone setback. Danielson back to throw. Throws and incomplete. At a critical moment, it went off the hands of the wide receiver, Fred Scott. He doesn't drop those very often. No, he really doesn't. It looked like he had his hands the wrong way that time and uh, wasn't in a good position to make the catch. It was a little high, but normally he sucks those kind of balls right out of the air. Talking about Freddie Scott, the excellent receiver for the Detroit Lions. There you see it. 
He just got, dropped the foot football. That happens. He just dropped it. He'd gotten a little bit away from the uh, defensive back, Leroy Urban. This will be the fourth punt for John James. He'll get it away from his 15. Urban, you know how he can return these sticks. They better kick it away from him. The ball will be returned by Urban from the 37 to the 40. And to the 45 and out of bounds. He goes out at the 47-yard line, a 38-yard punt, an eight-yard return. The Rams are in a spot where they can operate with 2.43 remaining in the game. James Harrell downfield to make the tackle. The Rams trail by five. Detroit's got five defensive backs in the game, and you have to give Ray Malavese and Monty, Monty Clark both a lot of credit because they've done a good job of selling their number two quarterbacks what their roles were. In this particular case, I talked to per Perigamo last week, and he said, listen, I know what the situation is, and I'm going to work hard, and when the time comes, I hope that I can go in there and do a good job and help the team. That's exactly what he's done, which is a great attitude. Bird Jones started, and he pulled a hamstring, apparently. Not a severe hamstring pull. Baragamo, the man of the moment, starting at his own 47 with 2.43 remaining, and the Rams trailing by five points. They have a lot of time. Here's a pass play by Baragamo. Swings it off short, caught by Duna. He gets out of bounds, and he gets a first down, down to the 41 of Detroit. The 12-yard pickup. The big item here is that a field goal will not really help him. They need the TD. Here's another shot from ground level. Paragamo throwing, throwing to Gooman in the flat. He's wide open, and he's finally knocked out of bounds by Smith, Wayne Smith, number 44, but he picks up 12 yards on the play. Ball's on a 41, plus 41. And Miller caught the last touchdown pass. Wide right, Drew Hill, the other wide receiver. Blitz. There's the blitz and the pass is caught by the wide receiver, and the tackle is made. And good yards for the Rams. They got about five. That was only the second pass reception of the day for Preston Denard. And uh, seven in a row for Ferragamo. He's hot. And that time he got a whiff of the blitz. He knew it was coming and got the ball away quickly to Denard. Watch it again. Another good shot of it. Watch the blitz. Odom, the strong safety, was blitzing on the play. Look at that. A good catch. But he got the ball away like he had to against that safety blitz. Now the Rams have called timeout. 2-10 left in the game. A charge timeout to the Rams. When we resume, they'll have second down and four from the Detroit 35-yard line. We see Malavasi on the sideline with John Hadel, who calls a plays for the sideline. Here we see Vince Ferragamo. And he's come in here and has done a very outstanding job for the Rams. Let's look at some other scores as they talk it over along the sideline. That's a final. Miami hands Baltimore their second defeat. Miami's 2-0. and Another fourth quarter score. The 49ers tied with the Broncos 21-all. In the fourth quarter, Houston uh, with a 10-point lead over Seattle. Archie Manning was traded to Houston, and I'm sure he's going to add a dimension to that team that they've been seeking, and it should help them considerably. Well, here we have 2.10 left. Very shortly, we'll have the two-minute warning, so the Rams on second down and four, Hank, are really in a spot where they could call most anything. That's what you like. You want to get more, you got to get four yards or more on first and ten. Uh, they've got six, so they're in very good shape and ahead of the defense in this particular situation. The Lions were ahead in this game by the score of 19 to nothing. Second down and four, and of course, Tyler is always a threat to break it out of that backfield. Look at how wide the defensive left end is over here. Here is the do a draw play to Gooman, and Gooman's down near the 33. He apparently is about a yard short of a first down. Gary Cobb, William Gay were there to tackle him. It's going to be third down and one. And now the two-minute warning. We have two minutes left. The Rams trailing 19-14. Have a third and one at the Detroit 32. The preceding message was brought to you by the National Football League. We have exactly two minutes left. Hank Stram and Jack Buck with you from Anaheim. The Rams were trailing 19 to nothing. They've made it 19 to 14. Two-yard run by Gooman. Then the 85-yard pass play. That was the big one in this contest, Hank. It really was. Turned the whole thing around. The momentum changed. The emotional aspect of it changed dramatically. And right now, the uh, 
emotion, from an emotional standpoint, the Rams could definitely have the advantage. Now the Rams on third and one need some yards. They're in the eye with Duman and Tyler. The give us to Tyler. He gets the first down. He's inside the 30-yard line, and these Rams are fired up. Doug English made the tackle. You see Malavesi again on the sideline, the, the sideline along with John Adel. The ball is to the 27 of Detroit. Following football, 60 minutes and the rest of tonight's schedule will be seen in its entirety at the conclusion of the game, except on the West Coast. Programs will be seen at their regularly scheduled time. Ferragamo is blasted. The ball comes loose. It's a fumble, and it belongs to Detroit. It was not a forward pass. It was not a forward pass. No question, and a guy that did a good job again, Baker, coming from the backside. Ferragamo did not have a chance whatsoever. Panky did not block him. English recovers a fumble, and uh, the Detroit Lions are back in business. Good field position. They have possession with uh, 121 left in this contest. Here we see it again from the end zone. You'll see, watch Baker come into the picture. Watch him from the backside. There he is. No, it isn't Baker. William Gay. William Gay, 79. And then English fell on the ball. I thought that was Baker, but it was William Gay coming in there and making the play, a beautiful play by Gay, number 79. Each team has two timeouts. We have 121 left. So the Lions, who have just taken the fifth turnover from the Rams, go to work at their 41-yard line. They give the ball to Sims, hit from behind. He lost about a yard. Jack Youngblood whirled around and got it. Timeout called by the Rams. They have one remaining. What the Lions need is a first down. We have 114 left in the game. And a timeout called by Los Angeles. I really questioned, here's the final score. Washington hands Tampa Bay their second loss of the year. And the Redskins are 2-0, 21 to 13, a final score. Hank, I really questioned the Ram timeout with 2-10 left in the game. They were going to get the timeout at the two-minute mark, and they they used one. I'm not saying they wasted one, but they used one then when they didn't really have to. Yeah, you always have to be concerned when you when you take a timeout because you never know when you have to use it late in the contest. And as you say, I don't know why they called the timeout in that particular situation, but they did. And, uh, you know, when you get right down to the end of the game like this is, with 114 left in the game, you always kind of look back and wish you had it back. There are five minutes remaining in that game with San Francisco. Uh, at Denver, and we're going to join that game when this one is over. They're 21 all, and they have quite a game going, as we do here. But now the Lions are in possession, protecting a five point advantage. There's Burt Jones. He started this game, popped the leg muscle, and he had to watch. And Sparagamo popped it up. And now it's second down and 11 from their own 40 for the Lions. Well, look at the left side. And Sims going to get him the first down. Tries to get outside, and not only that, he goes out of bounds and stops the clock, and now the Rams don't have to use the timeout. They went the wrong way that time. They had a soft spot on the left side, Jack. Instead, they went to the overshifted side where they had all the folks, and, uh, and along with that, as you mentioned, he ran out of bounds with one, makes the clock stop with 109 left in this game. So he gained two yards, but all in all it was a terrible play Seattle is closing in on Houston in the fourth quarter Houston leading 17 14 and now it is third down and we'll call it nine for Detroit here's a toss here's Sims coming this way and he is short of a first down the ball came loose but it still belongs to Detroit it's fourth down the thing about it is the Rams still need the touchdown as they trail by 5 19 14 now we have 55 seconds remaining in the game. And the Rams have just one more timeout left. Are they going to use it here? Are they going to use it here? They do. Last timeout. Third last last timeout. Time and now it'll be a fourth down play. The third and last time out is charged to the Rams. And it's going to be uh, fourth down and punting time for Detroit when we resume. The executive producer of NFL football is Terry O'Neill. 
Today's game produced by Charles H. Milton III, directed by Joe Assetti, our associate producer, Mike Arnold. 5-5 five, five left on the clock. That's all. You know, <laughs> this game isn't over if if the punter of Detroit, John James, happens to kick it to Leroy Irvin in a point where Irvin can operate, he'll turn the scoreboard around. The other thing you have to question now whether they're going to go after the kick. They have to come up with some kind of a big play. If they rush the kicker, they have to make sure that they do not rough the kicker if they don't block the kick. But uh, that's one chance they have of coming, getting back into this ball game to win it. If they go, everybody goes after the kick, and I'm sure they're going to have to do that. I certainly would in this particular situation. They have to go after the kick to try to block it. This is the fifth punt for James, and I certainly wouldn't kick it to Irvin. I've got to kick this ball out of bounds if it only goes 30 yards. In this situation with everybody coming, he's just got to be worried about getting the ball up in the air and get the flaps up. Catch the ball, kick it, and get it out of bounds. That would seem to be the order of the day with 55 seconds left. And Detroit leading 19-14 over the Rams after leading 19 to nothing. High snap. There they James go. There they go. Oh, that was almost blocked. Urban has to let it bounce, and it goes out of bounds. And the Rams are way back at their 10-yard line. 43-yard punt by John James, and evidently he has kept a lot of the pressure off. Kirk Collins, number 42, came up the middle. Had he taken the right angle, it looked like ground-level rush. Look at this. Watch 42, Kirk. Kirk Collins, number 42, had he taken the right angle, look at this, he has a chance to block it. You have to give James a lot of credit. He's been in that situation many, many times, showed a lot of poise, a lot of cool, got the ball up in the air. 48 seconds remaining, and the Rams have no more timeouts. So they have to throw those sideline patterns and keep the clock from running down. 48 seconds left, Detroit on top, 19-14. Ferragamo is the quarterback. They're after him, and he throws outside and incomplete. Try to get it downfield to the Denard. And Ray Malabese trying to pull one out of the hat, or his team will be 0-2, and the Lions will be 2-0. Wayne Smith was covering on Denard. I think uh, Ray has to feel good about the fact that his club came back and fought as hard as they did and played as hard as they did when they were down uh, by the 19-0 score. Willie Miller, Preston Denard, our wide receivers. And the third wide receiver is Hill, Drew Hill. Here's the short pass to Gooman. He's got to get out of bounds. He did, and he only gained about three yards, and uh, another person along the sideline was run over. We've done so many games, Jack. I forgot which one we did. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they were 16 to nothing, not 19 to nothing. I just have to correct myself. You know, the gal along the sideline with the camera, and she was almost trampled. It's going to be third down and seven with 38 seconds left. So the Rams failing to get a first down have only two more tries. Third down, they have no more timeouts. The pass is thrown and it's caught. And it is out of bounds at the 32 with 32 seconds left. And the pass caught by Drew Hill. Alvin Hall tackled it. And Hill managed to get out of bounds. I wonder if they won't work on Bobby Watkins and try to throw something deep on him, number 27, the rookie from Southwest Texas State. Here we see another ground-level view of it. Good protection. Then spots the receiver in good shape. Talking about Drew Hill, and he gets the ball right on the money and goes out of bounds. But Bobby Watkins is playing on the outside here. Trailing by five, the Rams put it in the air, dump it off short to Gooman. He got out of bounds again, and he picked up seven yards. Oh, no, they say, they say the clock continues to run with 20 seconds remaining, and that shocks the Rams into action. We're down to 15, and it's second down and four. I don't know why they didn't stop the clock. Here's the pass caught at the 41, and that's going to end the game. That's going to end the game. Well, they're going to howl about the fact that they didn't stop the clock. This one is over. Detroit has won their second game of the year, 19 to 14. A happy lion bench. And we're going to go see that San Francisco-Denver game. Meanwhile, the Rams are really hot over on this sideline. They chase the official away for failing to stop the clock when Gooman apparently ran out of bounds. Pat Summerall and John Madden take it away. 